Now, we talk about potential favorites for the tournament coming out right now, it's going to be Vici. Yeah, I've been waiting for a series like this. The crowd already very excited. We are going to have a matchup of, when you look at this tournament, the most dominant region, hands down, that we have seen. At least one of these teams going to make it to the final day of play. And Sin, I, I do want to also bring up with kind of how we've seen them play so far, this is just the powerhouse region. They are fueled by the fans as well. Absolutely, yeah. The, the, the crowd is going crazy for these two teams, and obviously we're going to have LGD coming out in a second as Let's well. Let's take a look at LGD. As LGD takes the stage, I, I'm actually just intently listening to the fans here, trying to figure out who the favorite really is. They're definitely getting loud for both of these teams. I, who do you think the favorite is? I actually don't know because LGD was very good last year and BG won two majors this year, so I think they love them both, but probably a little bit more LGD. Yeah, maybe a little bit more, and now we're going to get to actually know a little bit more about LGD. Let's see what they had to say with Casey. That's年的DPC排行榜老干爹是排在了第六。你们对于去年一整年自己的发挥和这个成绩还满意吗? 感觉没有比赛就都没有发挥好吧打打的不是很好今年一整年都就一般吧打的那其实感觉这一整年很多选手都有比较大的进步那你们是否觉得在贴吧之后心态上面有没有一些什么进步心态肯定进步了呀这一
，他说他自己的心理预期是，只要不拿第二名、第一名，其他任何几名都可以。你们怎么去看待？你的心理预期是什么？嗯，没有什么预期吧，因为你有些队伍训练不到，然后你对那几个队伍评估也不太确定。嗯，认真来说的话，你也预期不了，但肯定就是越往上越好嘛，就排名越靠前越好，肯定是想着去往冠军那边靠嘛。那这次 TI 在中国。不同于以往，除了好好打比赛，你们有没有一定要做的事情？没没有吧，打起来肯定就专心一点吧。好，那我们也希望老干爹能够打好自己的，好吗？嗯、谢谢。嗯，谢谢。Now, you often gas up your boys. You never want to have one of your lads going out without a full tank, right? I got Kyle sitting right over there. He's cheering me on every time I talk. A absolute, a absolute dream that man is. But you've been saying that you gas up your boys. You don't usually gas up your opponents, especially at the biggest tournament of the year. And you've been saying that these two teams have just been hyping each other up nonstop and have nothing but praise for each other. Yeah, I mean, you can see from the interview that they flattering each other. I mean, I heard an interview from Fade. And they asked him, like, who is your favorite team? Faith said, oh, I've been following LGD for 23 years. I'm 23 years old this yeah. year. <laughs> and that's what Faith said. It, it's one of those things where I, I, I'm kind of curious where it comes from, is the fact that they've, they've played with each other so much in the past. Like, what is it in your mind, Sin, that, that's kind of causing the camaraderie between these two teams they are now facing off on the main stage? I just think there's immense amount of respect. Like, that's the key word for me. They, they faced each other many times. They're probably very close practice partners, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, they did talk about in the interview how they've been scrimming against each other. And when you get to a certain level in, uh, on the international stage, it's, it's honestly, it's the same with a lot of Western teams where you'll see when, when teammates or former teammates go and shake hands or after the games, sometimes there's a little hug, there's a lot of respect, a lot of history. Uh, and these teams, they've met each other so many times, they know what each other can do. And at, at this level of play, you're just, the players can also be blown away. It's not just the fans, it's not just the viewers that can be blown away. You can be blown away by another player's excellent play, and these yeah. players on the stage have shown so much of that to each other. So. I kind of do want to ask you, you know, as somebody who does compete at uh, the highest of levels, do you ever have moments like that where you really reassess and you're just playing against someone and you're like, wow, I, you know, it's almost an, an honor to be defeated in that way? I mean, it, it, def it, it happens. It happens, yeah, for sure. Like, you play against some players, sometimes you lose the game and you're like, okay, we just played bad. Sometimes you play against a, yeah. a formidable opponent, you're like, okay, they just destroyed us and we deserved it. Like, that was incredible. Mm -hmm. Standout individual performances or genius drafts, whatever it is, there are elements to every game like this. And, yeah, these teams are absolutely no strangers to that. They, they place high in a lot of tournaments. Now, I, I do want to bring up something that a, a lot of us may be strangers to in the NA Dota community, but in, in the Chinese Dota community, apparently there are a bunch of nicknames yeah. that uh, kind of float around. Could you shed some light on what some of those nicknames are? Um, so uh, there is a nickname of Ori, the yeah. main player of BG, and we caught him uh, Chubby Boy. Little chubby boy. Li I mean, when he played really good, you call yeah. him uh, Little Chubby God. When he played not that good. <laughs> well, it just because, I mean, the reason that he got this nickname because when he joined EG like long time ago, and everyone gained a lot of weight except him. So teammates just call him like Chubby Boy Little Chubby. Is that so funny? It's very good. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I, I, <laughs> Little chubby god just resonates uh, very strongly with me. I think that's like your Tinder account, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's really Ooh, weird. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, anything you want to talk about besides uh, little chubby, chubby, little, little chub? <laughs> Trent. Thank you for an excellent <laughs> handoff and a, a way to send the question. You're talking about kids. Uh, I mean, throughout this, oh yeah, we'll go back to that. Uh, throughout this season, though, LGD, VG coming to this tournament, you had to wonder like who you're going to be rating higher mm -hmm. one over the other, right? LGD had such a good performance last year. VG, the ones who are closing out, the only team to win a minor and a major, yeah. which is, of course, still a testament to the strength of the, the region of China, right? That these guys even had to play in a minor. That's kind of ridiculous. But uh, I, I don't know. I Personally, I, I'm kind of feeling the LGD as the, the group stage. That's where you got to decide, like, okay, really, who is the team that's on top here? Hey, exactly. And that's uh, basically what Dub just brought up before we walked into this when kind of trying to ask who maybe had more fans here right now and you're basing it off performance throughout the entirety of the year. When you actually have gotten a chance to talk to these players, do you think that they really are feeding uh, off of the energy, not feeding? Do you think that they're feeding <laughs> off of the energy of, of the fans and actually playing here in Shanghai? 
I think playing in Shanghai will make them feel like better. Yeah. Kind of like charging more yeah. energy. Yeah, it's, it's one of those weird things, though, where that's always what you assume, right? When, when everybody's cheering you on nonstop when you have those great moments. But Sin, does it ever backfire? Are you ever, do you ever feel more pressure when you're playing in front of an audience that you know, wants you to do well? I think it's very individual. Yeah, I would uh, agree. It really depends on the person. You yeah. can turn it into something positive. You can turn it into something negative. I think the, the advice that we've heard from different players that have gone far in the tournament have just played at, in big stages in general is sometimes you just try to switch it off. Like yeah. you pretend, yeah. you, you can pretend the crowd isn't there or you can like pretend they're there more when things are going well for you. So like the cheers build you up instead of tearing you down when it's for the other team and go, yeah, try, try to harness the energy basically in the right moments. And I these players, like when they're in this booth, you're playing on this big stage, you're aware of what's going on, but you have played this game for countless thousand hours. And when you're in that zone, you're just focused on the game, you always look at what's the next play, what's the next move, and you try to, to concentrate on that. I, I kind of think the, the motto that we've heard from a lot of the players, not necessarily in these words, but it, it is pretty much don't put that Aegis on a pedestal. Try to get to TI, treat it like another tournament. Try to just play a game of Dota and play a good game of Dota at that. And we even heard that in the, the secret interview. They were like, yeah, yeah uh, if we lose, we lose. And obviously, that's not the mentality that anybody has at TI. I mean, yeah. you, you see those, uh, those, those interviews when we're actually talking to losing teams. That is not the energy of the interview. It's pretty much the exact opposite. But if you can get in that willy-nilly YOLO mindset, you might be able to pull down a win. I mean, that's what people attribute to OG a lot of yeah. the time as to why they do so well. How many interviews ended in, guys, just, you know, let's play some Dota. Just go out there, just play some Dota. Oh, just cast your spells, hit your spells. You know, everyone's trying to boil it down to the simplest thing that they can in order to execute up there on the main stage because that pressure, as you said, you know, individualistic, whatever, it's definitely there and everyone's scared to make that mistake, but you got to get rid of that fear if you're going to make those absolutely ridiculous plays that we saw from uh, OG last year when they took it. And we have quite a lot of examples throughout TI's history of teams that people don't think that highly of just getting on a hot streak. Uh, CDEC was a great example at TI5. People were like, okay, who are these teams? Yeah. Who are these teams? They just had a style, and they just played their style. They played fast. They went in there to do their best all the time. Uh, didn't get too phased by their opponents. OG last year, they barely got fourth in groups. They just start rolling with it. It's when you get in that zone and in that flow, that's what you're looking for. And we're going to have to see who is going to be in the zone. We've talked about the matchup, but it's time to get it under the way. We have two Chinese teams going head to head. PSG LGD versus VT Gaming! Game one. We heard a lot from uh, the video series and being able to get to know some of the players of VT Gaming as well as LGD. What better way to get them know even further as uh, talking to their competitors, talking to Alliance and Sanity and Boxy. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's been a rough tournament, but we do really appreciate you bringing your analysis to this side. Uh, you're pretty high for it, right, Insania? I know you're quite close with Fade. You yeah. could be supporting Vici Gaming here? Yeah, of course. Um, I've become friends with Fade over the season. He's an amazingly cool guy, and on top of that, he's a very good Dota 2 player. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see him here doing so well. And, of course, I'll be cheering a little bit extra for Vici in the series. And I have to ask, like, going into this series, we know you've got some bias, but maybe, Boxy, you could be a little bit more impartial here. Do you think? that VG Gaming is still the top Chinese team, or has that group stage performance from LGD swayed your mind? I think that compared to throughout the year, Vichy is looking a little bit shakier yeah. from like watching them in the group stage, and especially watching them play earlier. Um, so I would say that LED right now feels to me like a stronger team, but I also think that both of these teams are like incredibly close. And we yeah. played, against, like, played against both of the teams a lot in scrims and in tournaments. And sometimes you just get like kind of blown away by their execution and how on point they can be. Yeah. So it really comes down to like how well they play more than anything. Yeah. I think the cool thing about both these teams is that they're a little bit reckless, and yeah. they when you play against them, you can feel it. You can feel it's not this like controlled style that's very slow paced, where they're just gonna slowly try to take control of the game. They want to let you know that they're better than you, and they yeah. play in that kind of way. So a matchup like this, where both teams are gonna play kind of the same way, I think could be very scary. Either way, like even if you might be the slightly stronger team going into the series, it doesn't really mean much. And what are you exactly expecting out of the draft in that regard? It sounds like we want to see some aggressive heroes on both sides, and we've kind of started with that in this Leshrac first pick into Centaur Rubik. I think 
both of these teams tend to pick a lot of control and stuns. They want to fight constantly. Once you lose control, they want to make sure that they can just kind of ravage over you and just keep going and going and going and never giving you any pause to sort of take it back any map control. So already right now, they picked Centaur and Rubik into left track. I mean, I don't know. What do you think they're going to follow up with? Oh. I mean, it's hard to predict heroes. Like, the it depends so much on their preferences at this point. I think I didn't really expect the PSG ability to open Centaur Rubik, but it's a very solid off lane and it gives them a lot of control, like you said. It's a great reset tool for team yeah. fights, and if you've been watching the games now, like the team fights is basically the most important aspect of the game right now. That's where everyone is yeah. putting all the. A lot of teams have picked a lot of team fights. I think yeah. almost in every game, there's like this big major team fight hero. That's like Void. I think Void is super popular now. Scary. Right. Even Secret picked Enigma, Void, and Tide in one draft, for example, yeah, which we haven't really seen at all from them previously. So. Yeah. Tidehunter's been one of the most popular heroes uh, starting at the group stage. I think it was like fifth most picked and uh, it's going to be a Shadow Shaman for Vici Gaming. But talking about that, that all that team fight, is that part of the reason that I know Blitz told me you guys value stuns really highly. Oh, <laughs> told yeah. Told me that story about Big Cage just literally counting the stuns. Like, is that just a general philosophy with you guys? Oh, oh for sure. I think it's uh, the more stuns you have, like, the easier the game becomes to play, right? It doesn't matter if you're playing against Sumail mid or if I'm mid, if we're both stun locked until we die. So, uh, yeah, I think it, it just makes Dota easier to play. Also, when you're trying to control the map and you're trying to squeeze out the resources, if you have a lot of lockdown in multiple places, it's easier to control the space, right? But if you need always these two specific heroes to be in a spot in order to block the enemy team from farming there, then you're going to have to play a lot better and make sure that you read their moves a lot more correct. And it makes the game harder to play that way. Yeah. If basically any two heroes on your draft or three heroes can kill like anywhere, it makes sure that you force the enemy team to play careful. Yeah. But if you have a lot of heroes that can't really touch the enemy, I would put it, makes it yeah, harder to play the game. Yeah. So it sounds like you're talking about controlling areas, both when it comes to farm and, and probably bounty runes as well. Sure, so of course, that. all these things, yeah. Just controlling the map in general. I'm actually very interested in what Vichy has to do here. Because yeah. I feel like LGD kind of got like a very solid start to the draft. With, like They can pretty much do anything they want out of this. Whereas LGD, they pick the Slash Rack as this kind of like flex hero, and then they immediately pick a hero that almost exclusively is played as a position four. Which means that the Lesh is now most likely going to be either mid or off lane, as I highly doubt that they play at five. Well. I've seen Paparazzi <laughs> play it as one in a one position as well, so almost guaranteed a core Lesh track after like the first two heroes. Yeah, I think it's cool that LED picked Centaur Rubik, which is probably the lane they're going to run. Rubik on the position four with the Centaur off lane, and then Vichy plays two heroes. I think they have very heavy push, and I think Centaur is one of those heroes where you kind of want to be able to sit in a lane, you kind of want to be able to run around and do your own thing until you get your blink or until you get your vanguard into blink, whatever. Uh, and since Vichy has so much tower push, I think they should pretty easily be able to force LED's heroes around. Um, so it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fighting already from all these two heroes like in the early game. Leshrek wants to push, Rasta wants to push, Center wants to be on the other side of the map, kind of not really being their defending towers. And they're going to force him to rotate and then they're going to fight. Probably yeah. around like the safe lane towers, the mid towers. How do you think that lane matches up as well? I think Rasta Lesh might be their dual safe lane against the Rubik Centaur. I think it's pretty good for Centaur Rubik. I don't think they will lane Lesh track into Centaur. Centaur has like maybe 30 more base damage or something mm. ridiculous like that. While Rasta is also very hard hitting, it's easy. I think it's easy for the center lane to just kill the Rasta when he walks up. If he walks too too far up, he's just going to get lifted into stun, into kill. So that's something I actually want to re-emphasize that point, because I think it was so cool. So you're saying like the passive pressure that a centaur does through winning his lane, through the return and being able to chip down these towers, the way to be able to defeat that is to actually put as much pressure into tower pushing and force him to come fight. Yeah. Is that what you're well, saying? I think so, for sure. The hero does not want to... It, it, he doesn't. He wants to do his own thing. I think yeah. he wants to take his own towers and he wants to create his own map space. But if he is forced to go to an area where he can die to the enemy heroes, like a lot of his strength of his being super beefy and like a tower hitter kind of doesn't really work out. So and Stampede also has a very long cooldown. So if you can like take one fight where they use Stampede, and then you group up and fight again. He, I mean, he's not really gonna be able to walk into a team fight and stun somebody. He has to have Stampede or he has to have a blink. So maybe we're gonna continue that as Vici Gaming look to be low cooldowns, yeah. but they are going to feel good about that Rubik Centaur. I think you can even see it, because they ban Alchemist and Medusa. It's like two heroes where you want to shut down very early. Yeah. And I think they can. They already know that like Witch is going to be the one pressuring them. And then if they, on top of that, have a Medusa and Alk that farm super fast, while LED has to respond to all the pushes, they're going to get like very outpaced and like outfarmed. And then the fifth hero that's just farming is going to come like smack them 10 minutes later. Yeah. It's been a pretty, like what Box is talking about, is kind of how 
you've noticed a lot of these teams playing right now, where you have this, even if you looked at the Infamous series earlier today, uh, K1 was just farming jungle with Wraith King until he's level like 20. Yeah. <laughs> While yeah. the other four heroes are just running at them and putting pressure. And then even though the fights might not go great for you, you have this hero that is basically like your big investment. And once he finally decides to join the game, the game is just free. He's playing with two more items than everyone else. We're so, going to yeah. see the Lion for PSG LGD. Good hero to try and address and burst down that last rack and all that damage over time. Yeah, it also gives you answers to the Rasta, right? You don't want to sit there and just be shackled forever. Um, so I like it in that aspect as well. Yeah. I find it interesting that they banned both Nyx and Sven against LGD. I don't know if that's because they feel like the Slash is too squishy into it, but I feel like a hero like Pugna or something could be amazing. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the Nyx bomb is always scary when you run like a squishy hero like Leshrac or anything yeah. like that that wants to push towers and you get like linked into a Nyx, you can't really do much about it. That is some serious catch on LGD now between having Centaur Stampede yeah. before, now Lion, now Kunkka as well. And Sadie, you got to be living the dream right now. That's a ton of disables. No, this is great. I mean, the, the <laughs> they definitely have a lot of stuns. I'm happy with that. Um, I like it into Fatal Bonds. Like, the boat buff is pretty good at reducing the Fatal Bonds bad damage. Yeah. It's something that you don't really think about when you're playing the game, but once you're bo boated, you don't really notice bomb damage anymore. It becomes so irrelevant. Um, so it's a really good counter pick and I feel like the the thing is these two teams must know each other so well because a lot of the picks that they're picking aren't getting countered, I guess. Uh, it's more like, more like they're just trying to build style. their own drafts. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to get their playstyle to work. Yeah. And I think that by picking like Lang and Kunka, at least Kunka specifically, you have a hero that very early into the game he hits level seven, he has a lot of damage, he can like run at the tower that Leshrac, if Leshrac is hitting a tower, they X him, he'll boat him, he'll like whip him. That's already like seven or eight hundred damage, just six, seven minutes into the game. So it's a way to fight back the so this goes Aggression. to like what you were talking about, about trying to give the Centaur his own game, you solidify a really strong early game presence like the Kunkka, yeah. and that'll hopefully free up that Centaur and not yeah. force him back. That's interesting. I think that both Centaur and Kunkka yeah. are very good at dealing with the Skeletons, so I would not expect them to have picked Wraith King. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like the same thing with Alchemist and Medusa, I suppose, that he farms very fast in the jungle. I'm not so sure. I mean, he just seems to be a crazy hero right now. Everyone's been picking him, and yeah. it doesn't seem like people are shy about going late game with him either. The good thing about Wraith King, though, is that he's one of the few heroes that doesn't really care about getting X combo here or stun locked off the mm. Lion and getting fingered. So I can see like yeah. how they're thinking about it, but like Boxy said, both the Kunkka Splash and the Centaur just like nature of the hero. All of the spells are basically AoE. If you hit him, the skeletons kill themselves. I think it's, it's, it's like a hard hero for LED to go on, yeah. but they also have Lion, which has a very strong mana drain. So I think if Wraith King can kind of play it like Hector, like you said, farm jungle yeah. to level 20, get the mana, like remove mana cost of reincarnation, I think Witcher is in a very good spot, like if they can manage to get there. But until then, it's it might be hard for him to play on the map, you know, walk into fight and stuff. His skeleton's gonna die, he's gonna get mana drain, he's gonna get stunned. He needs a lot of farm. So do you think this Leshrac is going to be Yang's hero, or is it going to be Ori's, like? I think it has to be I think it's going to be Ori. Yeah, okay. I think Ori's going to be playing the Leshrac. I just feel like it's more of their comfort. It most likely would have been Paparazzi or Ori playing it. Yeah, I think uh, unless they pick some like super heavy counter pick right now, like Timber. Or, no, I think, I think or, like, it's Kunkka against Slark mid. No, I think so, but yeah. unless they pick like Timber or Slark mid and yeah. try to play off, off the lanes. But I don't, I don't really feel like Vichy or LED tends to do no. those types of things. That's more like an infamous thing right. where they want to play off snowballing. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, if infamous was in like Vichy's position right now, you could definitely be ex expect a Slark to counter the Kunkka. Yeah. You're absolutely know. right. It is going to be mid last rank last pick of bat. Yeah. I think that actually solves quite a lot of the stuns. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you pick stuns. This hero removes mm. stuns, and yeah. he can remove it from himself as well as someone else at the same time. So. Yeah. Uh, right. He's very good against both of the supports. I yeah. Think. Rubik doesn't really want to steal any of Abaddon's spells. And well, that's pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, it's like... Yeah. I don't think it's ideal, at least. No, it's not. Definitely yeah. not. Um, and also, I think the Lion Mana is very good. But every time you get locked down but as Abaddon, you can also just instantly pop your ulti to go in and save somebody else. So you can like remove your own disable to save somebody else. And they just pick TV. Into Lash. Interesting. All right. What are your Lash thoughts? I did say before the tournament started that I thought TV was a hero, but we never managed to make it work for ourselves. So, uh, and they just picked it into Leshrac and it's Warlock, which Warlock. I think are both very, very good against them. Yeah. The upheaval of just keeping him in place and the rock to control this BKB. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not really sure. I think I like Beachy's draft a bit more. I think they're going to be able to play a bit faster. So, 
But it's going to come down a lot to the early game team fights and who wins those. All right, gentlemen, I have to say, I've experienced a lot of revelations about drafting. Can't wait for the rest of your breakdowns, but we've got to get Purge his due before we get Vici Gaming versus LGD started. VG Gaming gets first pick in this match, and they're going to open up with a Lesh Rack. And what Lesh Rack allows you to do is cast your second skill, Diabolic Edict, and take buildings and towers. You kind of end up being this frontline guy to focus. But one of the weaknesses to Lesh Rack is that when chain stunned or burst damaged against, um, it's fairly straightforward to die if they jump on you with a heavy amount of heroes. So what Vici Gaming did was they tried to pick heroes that could try to slow that down a bit because on the other side, uh, LGD picked up Centaur, Lion, and Rubik, who are all very good at blowing him up. So they covered that with the Warlock. They can drop the ultimate to stop the run at you during Stampede or other chain stuns. They also pick the Abaddon for the last pick. They want to remove the stuns that go in the last rack as he's the front of the fight. And on the other side, they also have uh, the Wraith King. Wraith King, very good at absorbing those spells and being able to run at the enemy hero. So it's going to be a super good match. Avicii Gaming needs to defend their Leshrac. That is the hero to watch in the fight. And we're going to send it over to the casters, OD Pixel and Fogged. Thank you very much, Kevin. Yes, up in the upper bracket right now, Vici Gaming versus PSG LGD. I'm Odie Pixel here with Fog. We've just seen the draw, some exciting picks, and some picks that I feel is a little bit of a risk, right? That last pick from Arme, he feels confident in the Terra Blade, something that we've seen him have a lot of success for it with in the past. Yeah. But they've got a lot of means to deal with the TB, right? There's a lot of magical bursts coming out from Vici Gaming. Just immediately, right, Insania, the first thing he said, TB was picked, and he goes, TB at the Lash. The first thing that he says, right, there is a lot of burst damage. That being said, though, there is protection coming from PSG LGD as well, right? They do have that Kanka. The Rum is one thing that we'll be able to put into factor. And also, they're going to look to right, run around and fight his form, right? We've seen what uh, LGD has been able to do with that. And we've seen what happens when you have, like, a Terra Blade, anti mage something like this, these super farmers. You kind of run around as four and put pressure on the opposite side of the map. And the TB, it gives them tower push. I think that's the thing that PSG LGD was looking for because they didn't really have anything besides that until that point. No, absolutely. You look over, obviously over to the side of VG Gaming. They, they've got that ledge. They've got yeah. that shaman. They're going to be taking towers like nobody's business. So that pace will be there from VG Gaming's lineup, which may force Same to fight a little sooner than he may hope. Here we are. You know, the Gear versus Centaur. Camp the mid lane. Don't let him build up those retaliate stacks. So Chalice knows this. Teams have been doing this a lot, camping that mid lane. He's going to even put a, a VG spray on their tower. Thank you, couple hits. Give him a little bit of a time. Yeah, playing right. sort of a step ahead of the step ahead of the game that, as you said, people have started to do in response to the old retaliate stack building. To we'll see what sort of lanes we have come into play and see if anyone's going to get caught out around this bottom arena spot. So a lot of stuns from both sides, really. A lot of catch and lockdown. Look at the wards coming out from PSG LGD. Really, really focusing on the mid lane, making sure that Somnus has a good time, making sure that he can do room control as well versus this Lesh Rack being able to walk up, be able to see that one immediately. He's, he wants to prevent getting ganked pretty much, because if he's like, against Orina 1v1, he, he's going to be okay. If he gets rotated on, he can get killed, he can get set up on from Fade. Now we see Paparazzi so have a little bit of a look towards the rune spot, but notice that with Chalice on the front lines, there's so much stun that there's no point trying to walk up and grab that. Will mean the PSG OGD are able to start taking the majority of the runes. Three for one as we get into the lanes. It's top lane, X Nova. The, the weight is going to be on him to, to make sure that Arme can farm safely as the pressure will be there. Yang being joined by the Shaman on the top lane himself and Fade, ready to make sure that Arme does have that pressure put on him on the early stages. And once those levels are there, right, and the, the shield and, and the shock, there's a lot of early game nuke that this TB is going to be very vulnerable to. Most definitely. Immediately, they're going to use that meta to try to zone at the start, try to guarantee themselves to get these last hits on the first wave. And at least the one thing that TRTB does have is high armor, right? So Fade, your right click's going to hurt a little bit less, but we've seen what these Abaddons are able to do now with Curse of Avernus already. Absolutely. Arme, he gets bullied, and that's when you have meta bomb. Yeah, just run down and take down half HP. And it is, it's all about how much you can find from those first few waves with the first meta to sort of set your dominance in the lane. And Beachy Gaming making sure that he doesn't get that free chance to do so. Fade comes in from the side, drops down a nuke again. So, so much pressure getting Arme pushed all the way back behind his tower. He's having to pop that early south. And this first meta isn't going to get him much at all from the lane. He's only managed to touch three creeps, one last hit, two denies. This laning situation from Vici Gaming is perfect to slow down the TB stop. Yeah, super solid pressure lane. And they're going to keep going at it. They're just going to keep looking to put that pressure onto Ame. And they should be able to quite easily and continue to do so yeah. up in that top lane. So bottom, we'll take a look at this one, how it's been going so far. Looks like it's a bit of a trade. 
for the time being. Once you start getting those level twos on the Rubik as well as that Centaur, you can easily try to set up for kills. Warlock, more of a, as known, very defensive kind of support. So it's more just securing Paparazzi's farm. They're very, they're pretty likely to get a kill down here on PSG LGD onto the Warlock, or maybe even onto the Wraithing if they step out of position. So we'll have to watch FY, what moves he decides to make on the map as this Rubik. As he's going to be the one to kind of set the tempo for PSG LGD in the end of the game. See already as well, Fade's able to get that first stack going, in fact, for, for their own benefit up top. As they'll look to try and pull it in, and eventually will have the, the nuke damage to clear it themselves. Make sure that they can just find so much from this top lane setup. Yang, free farm at the moment on the Abaddon, 11 for 2. Yep. I love that X Nova went for the mana drain. Not, you don't really need Hex up in this top lane just yet because you're not going to really set up for kills. You're all about just trying to protect. Similar, Vine's not like a Warlock, but in this fashion you can at least try to help out a little bit more than some other heroes could. Just constantly burn down that mana. And why really just camping in the mid lane here. Trying to set up for maybe a courier snipe, but it's coming out now. So we'll see. Look at the see how now. patient he is. 250 is on the mark. It's yeah. probably gonna be flying as soon as it gets. No, there. you're right. FY realizes there's no point in sticking around any longer. Even if he does see it, he's not going to get it. So he backs away. The mid lane still that slight edge for Somnus in this matchup. I guess uh, sort of what you would expect to see this right early levels for the Kunker. I mean, even as the the levels go on, right? It's this beefy strength hero, hard hitting. Unlikely to be forced out of lane by Lesh alone. Yeah, it all depends on if you if you get hit by too many stuns, if you have a couple denies built up on the Lesh from those stun setups. Yeah, but like you said, high amount of physical damage coming up from that Kunkka, and you're not really at risk of dying unless another rotation comes in. And Ori's not really even playing the pressure lane too much. He's actually just playing it strictly to farm, not connected on a couple of those stuns onto Somnus. Somnus has been saving the Tidebringer every single time to secure himself with a last hit on those range creeps for himself. I don't think I put the, the top lane. Level three, and Ame is going to pop that meta once again, looking to, to catch himself back up and get ahead of Yang. And they're closing the gap. LGD is able to secure that top lane a little bit more. Another attempt to let's get the stack going here around this top camp. X Nova with a bit of a setup onto Fade. They started to bring Ame across. It's a little too far for, for Ame to track and risk missing the creeps in lane. So it'll just be the supports Radiance fighting off one another. He was blocking the pole, right? It looked like X Nova was trying to pull upwards and Fade just hit it to stop that. But now. Stun off the mark here, X Nova. They're gonna try and turn him. Jackal's out. He's gonna uh -oh, give a chance Fate. because of Avernus to build up. The Phonic Shield keeps Fade safe. As Fade can back away, and Yang just punching into the two of them. Taking their attention away from the action and the potential kill and from the creep waivers. That's another metamorphosis that comes to an end. Solid early game here. Solid early start for Vici, at least in the three lanes. But then we do see, of course, that mid. Somnus really starting to take over a little bit there. I'm gonna pop to oh. Yang. Wants to get aggressive still. Both teams really hunting for that first blood. Uh -oh. Next over a little too far forward. That was two. Beachy gaming. That top lane, it was looking strong from the off, and it's just, just granted them that first blood onto X Nova. Bottom lane. See a quick play and response. They'll look to bully the support. DY, he's got backup. Or he's in town, and so is Paparazzi. They've got the setup stun. Paparazzi's beating into Chalice. Chalice is in trouble. F5 the also gets taken down as Ori is able to chase him back over to his side of the map. They get both kills down bottom. Vici Gaming making the quick plays here as they get mobile across the map. I mean, top lane pretty much, I think, has to kind of be abandoned in a way now from PSG LGD. They can't secure this Terror Blitz farm up there. He's going to have to resort to jungle. This dual lane is just way too strong. Abaddon, as well as that Shadow Shaman, just way too much damage. Lion and TB are just a weak dual lane, as we were mentioning before. I think at the moment for, for PSG LGD, it's definitely going to be Somna saying, hey guys, I've got a good in the mid lane. I'm yeah. getting this start. I'm getting this free farm. He's going to be the one that starts to get active and makes those plays, probably when he hits the level 7. And we'll look to, to respond to these these aggressive moves from Vici Gaming on the side lanes to make sure they have the firepower to turn them around. I think he has to look for runes now, though. We see bottom when the Lesh was able to get that haste rune. You know Lesh is going to go for a bottle. That's why we saw them ward earlier to set up for that. So Somnus, or at least the supports, have to ensure that they can block out those power runes from the Lesh. They will be able to there, taking out at least a regen rune. Have to be super careful of all those rotations that can come out quickly. As the Lesh has set up in the side lanes, the Wraith King stun as well as the Shadow Shaman will probably be in opposing lanes for Ori to make those rotations. And eyes on mid, here's GLGD bringing the two supports here to, to try and put the pressure on. Fate did show Ori. Now gonna come back out towards the creep wave. And as you can see already, FY's left the area. The, this is a, a hard catch to get. He's gonna step back over as if it's Vici game at the begin to jump. 
board, looking for the Kunkka. He's tanky, but is he actually tanky enough? He's taking so much damage here, Somnus. The boat's not going to be in in time. x Nova finally comes in with a stun, but now Fiji Gaming, they've brought in more. PSG RGD have to back off. As that was a, a bit of a bold attempt from Somnus to step up. And as it seemed, you know, as I said, FY had already started the, the walk back to top lane, and x Nova wasn't quite, quite in there quick enough to, to help him out. Fiji is incredibly ready for the rotations right now. You can tell they're looking at the five minute mark or, you know, five minute cannibal wave that was coming in. They made sure, like you said, they collapsed onto that mid lane. As soon as Samus steps up, he's an easy kill for those two. The Leshrac, high amount of magical damage. If you don't get your rum off early, you will definitely get brought out by that one. Ame, though, he'll be like, okay, cool, thank you. At least alleviate some space, you know, alleviate some pressure that's coming onto me, and I'll be able to farm a bit here. But immediately, Ame is going to step up, and Fade is already up here with Yang. Yang's more than happy to dive now. He's hit the six, he's got the borrowed time. They'll get straight in onto the Terra Blade. Right behind the tower, he goes, Ame. He won't dive any further, they'll just opt to continue to put this pressure onto the Tier 1 tower itself, and they're bringing in more. TP over from Ori, ready to join the push and make sure that Ame cannot turn back into the lane. He's already TP'd over to the Shrine. He knows that it's time to hit the hit the jungle with the Wraith Bands. This lane is well and truly over, and Vici Gaming, with this pressure, should be able to find a very early Tier 1 tower. And we're going to see them do a lot, right? That's what their draft is about. Like Insania was mentioning on the draft panel, you look, they have Edict, they have Shadow Shaman. They're going to want to just keep running at these lanes and pressuring the towers as early as possible. Constrict the Mac versus that Tower Blade. They know that PSG LGD is going to be playing Mostly 4v5 in this game, you know, sure they have a Wraith King, but Wraith can get more involved than a Terra Blade in the early stages of the game, because at least you have a stun, while TB is not really going to contribute too much of anything except for like a reflection, which you don't want to be walking in to do. First, a Leshrac lineup. They will feel uh, a little sort of safer across the map, Arme, as well, now that Chalice has hit that 6. He will at least have that Stampede to, to offer any time they start to sense Vici Gaming closing in the gap. They will have to be quick, of course, still. That lockdown there from from both the Lesh and the Shadow Shaman that they have to be wary of. It's Fade, as you can see once again, just sat behind Paparazzi, making sure that if any, any aggression comes out, they'll have the backup. Yang is starting to see if he can take a, take a little bit of the jungle away from Arme. Uh, Arme coming back across and still near that Shrine. Yang does have to be be a little careful, but I guess every time he has the borrowed time up, he feels very confident, right? He can go over yeah. here. If there is going to be support rotations and backup coming the way of Arme, it's only going to open up the other two lanes for Vici Gaming to get that pressure and keep that pace up. Yeah, they're just trying to... Vici's just mostly trying to play fast and keep the pressure up, like we were saying. Like PSG, they want to play the farm game much more so in this one. We even see Somnus, like we saw Chris Luck doing actually on Infamous. He's just farming Ancients as, tide, as the Kunker right now with his Tidebringer. He stacked them up a couple times, so did his team. So he's going to be able to clear those out. And an okay pace. Yeah, I mean, for, I mean, for the Double Bracer Radiance this game, we've uh, seen well, a few Kunkers go for the, the Double Bracer Halberd. Is there a reason why this game sort of fits this build better? I think... Actually, I'm trying to think of a good reason for it. I mean, it's, it's good versus the Wraith King, right? He just has the evasion. It's always going to be nice versus the Skeletons and everything, too, and it gives him a big scaling potential. I think that's what he wants, because I did see the Halberd builds. Mm. They kind of fell off, right? The, the Kunker True. builds, it was like, you know, you can understand why they went for it, but... And I do like the build overall, but I think Somnus is more of a player where he wants to be like, I'm going to scale very hard into the late stage sure. of the game, and this is going to ensure that I'm going to farm that one. And I guess as well, we're, we are, we've seen sort of the Halberd build in games where the Kunker has a carry that's obviously yes. building the Radiance, and this time that's that's not going to be the case. Terra Blade Radiance is not quite the meta build. Even though you really like it. Even though it's... <laughs> do it in your pubs, kids. Don't do it. Mid lane. DY is already in position there if they get O2 over aggressive with the Chaotic Offering ready. Pretty significant steal, actually, by FY. This gives him a pushing tool now on PSG LGD if he's able to set up and go for the other side lanes with this Diabolic Edict. Because besides that, their push was pretty limited. And we see, like we are saying, Vici, they want to keep running at these towers, bring the fight to PSG LGD, set the tempo, set the pace, allow Paparazzi to farm. They really are. They're hitting all their goals so far, Vici Gaming. Everything going to plan. They're sort of taking off the checklist of what they hope to accomplish in this early game. Yeah, Paparazzi, it's 11 minutes, phase minus. Pretty decent timing for himself down bottom. He actually was not pressured too much by this Centaur Rubik lane, which a lot of times is able to set up for a lot of kills versus most dual lanes. But yeah, that Warlock really allowed, allows Paparazzi to get this farm. Rotation's now coming in. I saw they were focusing on giving X Nova some of that XP mid for a while. They really want to have this finger online. It's going to give them that extra burst damage to bring down the Lash, maybe bring down the Wraith King in some of these situations. 
we see also the two points in the Mana Drain. So we're probably going to see Mana Drain be pretty relevant in this game because he's playing versus the Wraith King. So he definitely can set up for some times to maybe even bring down Paparazzi without getting his whole pot. And then Somnus is going to find Fade, oh, stepping forward, sets up for sweet little kill there off the back of the Greek type, bring it hit. That's a, I mean, that's a pretty sizable run, 500 XP. I mean, hey, it's, it's, it's the first kill that LGD's found this game. Very true. And with that lead and the gold they're getting from the towers, those little kills, those supports, you know, they're, you know, they're worth a pretty penny early on. Any type, of, any type of free kill PSG LGD can get yeah. with this type of lineup, right? They want to farm. They want Tower Blade to just get the farm on, so those are... Those are great for them. And it's only going to boost up that, that Radiant Skull. Well, 2,400 at the moment. Somnus on his road to the Relic. Yep. Or he's, or he's making the moves and running around the map more so. He just sees a Lash Strike. Well, Somnus is just, he's just jungling. He's just like, okay, I'm going to play the efficiency game. I'm a Kunkka. I farm fast. And he's going to, he's off to him. Like, he's going to have a very good timing on this one already. If he does not die again. It's, it's looking pretty quick. I mean, it, it, the chances of it dying up, I feel they're pretty low. He, he's not an easy kill, walking around with those braces, as long as he gets the boat off. Yeah. Or if he has any backup. If he has anybody to stop the chain stun of the, pretty much the shackles is the biggest one that they do have on Vici. They have other stuns, but that's the big one that will be enough lockdown for them to not get the rum off. So Vici, they've got Serpent Wards available again. Immediately they smoke up. They want to look to put the pressure on. In particular, also get some wards down, because right now their vision is pretty much only the one down bottom, so they don't have any information of where Ame is farming. So we see them, they're walking in, kind of scout out the jungle, put down some vision, even some sneaky one. You see the tree cut there by DY, puts it up on that high ground. So. Not the not the most expected ward. No, it's almost as if you know, Ame, he's he's ready for these sort of moves. He knows that with that tier one tower going down very early on, that that top area of the map, it's not very safe for the TB. He's sort of sticking to the triangle, was able to get another stack going on the ancients. Yeah, they circled the whole area. You just see Xnova. He just circled his entire yeah, jungle. That, that like, area is don't dangerous. come here. Yeah, Dude, yeah they've got to be careful. Triangle. Yeah, stick with stick with Somnus, even though Somnus is taking your ancients right now. You can stick with him, soak that XP for a little bit, and just play on the right side of the map mostly. Yeah, balance out the farm between the mid lane and the bottom lane. Yeah. As so they continue to get pushed in. I mean, he's now sort of gingerly stepping over back into his jungle is, as we say, all going to be underneath that warp vision. Both of them, yeah. The second ward also will be able to spot out the illusions. As X Nova, he's actually setting up with a wraparound here onto Ori, but there's backup. Yang's already prepared for this. More of LGD moving over to this half. This is sort of the... The time where, where Ame can afford to farm up here. If he's going to go up here, he cannot do it alone. They have to bring him back up, make sure that they've got presence in, in the neighborhood. So even in these situations where Vici came in, they do have the vision. They're not going to be able to make any aggressive plays off the Terra Blade. He's got his friends around him. Yeah, they're, they're doing that. Like, we used to see a lot of like, smoke rotation through your own jungle. Just clear out the wards and protect yourself. They're bringing two sentries to try to look for these. Oh, Ame. Uh, he needs help. It is kind of close. Is it close enough? There with the stampede, they'll get out. And there with the turnaround, Ame pops the Sunder, Metamorphs is out as well. He wants to fight. The question is if Somnus can get a grab, but he has got that maxed out X mark. He's got the cast range. Is he going to be able to get close enough? He will. He'll grab Yang. Yang's a bit of a tricky one. Does have borrowed time, so not really a, a quick and easy kill as Yang will be able to easily walk this one off. They don't find the kill, but they are at least able to push the wave round, get some damage onto that tier one top. Back towards mid, Ori. Set up onto Chalice. Chalice, of course, already using that Stampede to allow the rest of the team to help Ame top. Doesn't matter. FY's in. Telekinesis and a stolen stun thrown out the way. Avori will keep Chalice safe. Immediately, Vici, they're going to respond. They see the aggression happening top. They lose their tier one top tower, but they want to make their own move. But the Glyph is popped, and these wards are going to get cleaned up, but they should be able to get a little bit of damage here on this tower. Fate's actually just hitting Somnus with them. So not going to get too much damage on the tower here at all, actually. And Somnus will be able to clean these up. More gold. Big movements for PSG LGD there. Clearing out their jungle, getting that opportunity top. If they can get any type of tower early in this game, it's very significant for them. As oh, Radiance is pretty much done. It's it's a very quick one. It's a, it's, it's a fast timing from Somnus. X Nova was not able to find... Okay, he actually only used one of the sentries on the wall. Actually, no, he's just holding on to them. So he didn't even look for the wards that were placed inside their jungle. So that tells me they don't want to be playing on that side. That was just a quick sweep through earlier to make sure and guarantee that Ame could get that farm, and then now they're going to play on the bottom side again. So you say, do you like the, oh, what that sentry ward bottom? It's just oh. shy of catching the ward of Vici. So Vici is going to be aware of this movement down here. Well, that's true. It was just right next to it. That's a very clever ward there by Vici, as we've seen a couple teams do. Yeah, LGD unlikely to find anything anything big in terms of kills, but the least they can start to push onto that tier one tower. They've got four heroes down here looking. Both of the sentries action. are literally right on the edge of catching that ops ward down bottom from Vici in the lane. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. There we go. 
that one right there. Warding, yeah, there we go. Now we see it. Warding spots it's, on point from BG. That's a, it's such a nice ward there. It's going to catch out all that rotation like we were saying from PSG LGD. They will lose their tower, but they know immediately because they saw the rotation coming, they can do this up top. They can put the pressure on the tier 2 tower themselves. And so are we, are we liking the greed from Yang this game? He's got the Midas running. Oh, he went for the Midas as well. Mm. Okay, cool. I think he wants to be able to scale super hard into late game too. They look at the PSG LGD draft and they're like, yeah, you know what? Both of us can go into late game and probably be able to take it, either one of us, depending on how the fights go. So he wants to also be super farmed in this game too. That is pretty crazy, right? That is very 1k high. lead shot, I guess, as you you always tell me, Dota Plus, it really favors taking towers. Yes, they did take a tier two top, but 73% probability that this match goes the way of Vici Gaming. That's, it feels like it's hard to call, right? We are 17 minutes in. It's only four to one. There's not that much of a net worth difference. Sure, I guess losing the tier two top sucks, but does it suck that much? I wonder which hero it also really likes on the side of Vici. I definitely, I know it likes Wraith King a lot. Doesn't like Abaddon. It might like Abaddon and Leshrac also a lot, so. Maybe it just likes Midas's. Maybe it just likes Midas's. His bottom, Paparazzi. They're trying to bring him down. He has mana. They will just use the finger to pop the ulti. But it, it was a level two ulti. So it's only that two minutes instead of the really long down of like a three plus. Let's look at that efficiency. Very nice. 98%. Grant would be very happy. So Radiance is both about to be online, right? Paparazzi almost having his. But now he does not have reincarnation. So we probably will see PSG LGD look to make an aggressive play here as first. They're going to scout up for some wards and they will find this one now. Starting to, to reclaim some of the safety of their jungle, which is it's of course going to be hard to do so without those two towers standing up top. Such a quiet game though, four to one only. I, I mean, it, I, I feel like the you, lowest kill counts you kind had. of expected it coming into this match because you know that for both of these teams, there's quite a lot of pressure. There's a lot of people in the stadium watching. <laughs> and this series, you know, whoever wins this, they're instantly going to become the crowd favorites, right? This series, who's going to be the one that the, the local crowd's going to feel most confident in taking them all the way to the finals and all the way towards that Aegis. Whoever comes out on top here, that's your answer. Yep, more than likely. As yeah, both teams not really crossing the river too much. Just a little bit of fear of doing that as Ame, he's gotten away with, I mean, he's gotten away with murder in this one, right? He's 207 last hits. He has treads, four Wraith Bands, and his Manta, level 14. He's not really been pressured too much from Vici after this early game where they got a good amount of map control. They haven't been able to find him. That being said, though, Paparazzi, of course, is matching that farm even ahead of that. So we have a very, very close one here. Golden XP, pretty much zero. Runes are up in 30 seconds. We may see a little bit of bloodshed around that. They, I mean, PSG LGD, they do have their, they have their blink and they have a full Crimson Guard finished on Chalice. That could be a pretty big timing for them to go, go look for plays. Surprisingly, he didn't go for the pipe first. I guess he just wanted to have his own tank ability for himself versus just the right clicks. But yeah, the versus that Lesh. So that pipe definitely going to be really important for him to protect his allies. And of course, the BKBs, the next big timings, PSG LGD. They're able to get those online. It's going to be pretty critical for them versus Vici's draft, who they have a Lesh. So once that BKB is online, Lesh's damage potential just gets chunked down quite heavily. Radiant Do we have it? We're just two for two for two was down the bouncy rooms by the looks of it. They're actually setting up here. Won't be able to find Somnus up top. Yeah, continue the yeah, farm game. Four to one, 20 minutes. Oh, Whoop. bit of action one. down here. The snakes are out. Stampy's there for X Nova. They'll turn. And the snakes will be dropped for nothing. <laughs> PSG LGD are able to turn, X Nova's able to get himself that second stack on the finger buff this game. And lane Paparazzi also gets his reincarnate popped. Just a quick reflection with that Radiance and burning him down on top of just a lift and a quick stun. Vici. I feel like they want to probably, they, they want to start putting a little bit more pressure on. Like we said, PSG LGD, right now this is them kind of just buying time, waiting till they get those BKBs. When they, they have just, them, they just want to fight. They're going to look to just fight and run at Vici afterwards. So Vici. I mean, are they going to want to fight? I, when they have BKB, I do think so. Yeah, well, you think they should. Versus Leshrac, I'd imagine that they would be running at them and fighting when they have the BKBs, but we'll see if that's the case. And yeah, they're very comfortable just farming. But yeah, double BKB timing is going to be very big for PSG LGD. As on the side of Ichi, they don't have that big timing that can be the same. Sure, they're building the Crimson Guard as well on the Abaddon, but theirs isn't this big, like, they can't get their own BKBs and it's that impactful. It's going to be impactful, of course, versus the Kunkka combos as well as the Centaur, but Kunkka, 
hard physical damage. Same thing with Terrorblade. Vici, they don't have that same physical damage coming out on their side just through those BKBs. Chalice for fun. Nice little skeletons. Get himself some gold. And yeah, quite the farm game. All about that farm. Mm -hmm. These boys, they don't want to make mistakes. And sort of those early deaths really only being those sort of in those in the in the lanes in the in the first few minutes. Sure, we did see that one pick off down bottom. But most of the time since that laning phase, everyone's been keeping it safe. Nobody's messing up. Everyone's hitting their timings. And the, the difference between these teams is incredibly minimal. Just a, a 1k lead for Vici Gaming, but Vici Gaming, they, they do have the, the majority of towers taken in, in comparison. Uh, you look over to Brazil. See, they've only taken oh. two tier ones. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't quite know how he did not find him there. I mean, X Nova. X Nova's still like. He's, just, he's gone, right? Is he gone? He's gone, right? He's gone. <laughs> he's safe to move again. But that TP out, Vici Gaming will group up. Now look to go for that smoke. I think, as you said, they are very aware of the BKBs. They want to try and strike before them, but is that I BKB already, done on Arme? They're all, both pretty much done. Yeah. Somnus is 200 gold away from his as well. So Let's see how they can pass. Up. Arme, they're going to get the instant hex. Pack Rest is going to be able to get the jump forward. Can they take to save them down without the charge for BKB? But the BKB's out. Arme's fine. He's ready to turn and fight. Jump forward for challenge. Gets the two man who stopped the better ball. This is out. The boat down. On to the three of them. They're taking out the Shaman. Chalice is focusing now. DY in the back. He's going to stop. Channeling okay. as up Paparazzi's drive for Ame. Ame will fall. They get the big kill onto the Terra Blade. Can Vici Gaming get more? Sideline wrap around from X Nova. Catches out Ori on his attempt to escape. No chase for for Chalice. Chalice, he's out of spells to use. Hexed up by Fade. Paparazzi on top of him. The Aphrodic Shield explodes. They find a second. Still looking for more Vici Gaming. They know that this is their time to pounce. Shackles out from Fade. Puts his hands up as well. Paparazzi's in. They're on top of Somnus. He's tanky. Have they got enough control? Hex is out. Into the Ray Fire Blast. The shield's going to pop as well. Bringing him alone. The BKB is delivered. He's ready to turn. Tidebringer here. Cuts down Fade on the back lines. The drag back control. Boat back online. A big combo gets dropped down onto Paparazzi, but he's into the trees. Heals there from DY, and Paparazzi will be able to back off. The Somnus, he does go for the s but he's a little low on mana, so both teams will back off and reset gold, as you can see, favoring LGD in that scenario. Yeah, Fade with a die back there. Look at the damage done, though. 12,891 to 15,000. Crazy amount of damage done in the fight there. Ame got to get it separated from his team. But we saw Vici. I thought they were actually going to lose everybody there. I they thought danced. it was going to get a lot worse for the Radium. Yeah, they danced really nicely around the spells of LGD. They kited around Chalice as well when he jumped in forward. And then a couple missed spells there from PSG LGD. A couple missed Tidebringers as well from Somnus. Trying to line up those cleaves. Didn't want to get in too close. Didn't want to get chain stunned. But yeah, Vici, I think that they're obviously LGD, they come out ahead of that one, but it could have been way worse, like you said, for Vici. Because that double BKB timing that did come out from LGD and PSG LGD immediately, they're smoked up again looking for a fight, even though they don't have their meta available for about 40 seconds. The other four are ready. I mean, they, they know that they're strong with those BKBs. And especially when the Golem's not ready to drop. Yang. They want to find something. Yang's got the borrowed time ready. Far up, though. See the jump from Chalice, trying to look for the back line is behind Jang. Now the ult comes out from Ibadan. We we'll start to retreat. Somnus popping the BKB to commit for this fight. Stampede juice as well, allowing PSG LGD to surround themselves around the Abaddon. They'll get Yang. The rest of them already on the way out. X Nova singing for the center. Come on, beautiful stun there from X Nova from the low ground, as he'll be able to set up for a second catch. LGD continuing to just come out on top with these small little skirmishes, these little pokes. They're able to use the BKBs, chase down Vici Gaming, and it's very hard for Vici Gaming to stand their ground and turn. Yeah, especially when Chaotic Offering isn't up. The team frame for Vici is not there because of how squishy they are too, and if there's no Chaotic Offering, they have no counter initiation to kind of run away. That's why we saw PSG LGD smoke up and go for those bounty runes. Yang, he wanted to assert that dominance, but maybe just a little bit too far that time when his team is not ready to fight. His mind is up there during his death. So. A little efficiency down the pan for Yang. Yeah. More space for Ame. More PSG LGD to continue farming up. These timings, these double BKBs, yeah, like we said, very big problems. Fichi, their next ones. 
aren't going to be nearly as impactful. Oh, no. I mean, they're getting close to theirs on the Lash, but like we said, they yep. don't have the same type of method as LGD to just deal that straight physical damage to bring down a target. And Ame, he is really the strongest. He can become the strongest one in this game if he sits in the back lines. Ah, and it's, I mean, sure, one, once the AC's done on Paparazzi, then at least him and Yang can start to try and right-click down the heroes. But the cause is this Sensor, this Kunkka, Terrorblade. These aren't heroes that died to a few right clicks early on. It's pretty crazy. They've, they've got a lot of HP, a lot of damage resistance. Crimson Guard, of course, with Chalice is also going to cause issues for Vici Gaming to try and get damage in around the BKBs. It's it's hard for Vici Gaming to fight. And yeah. I think there's they sort of started to realize that off the back of the last two plays. And they're asking themselves, what have we got to do? Their best hope is to catch LGD out in a situation where LGD is not going to have the full squad. They have to get a good Fatal Bonds as well, but that BKBs, BKBs will always be the problem. It's actually, I was going to say, it's pretty crazy. I'm looking at items from both teams, and we have, like, mirrored items coming out. We have, like, the Crimson Guard and the Abad, and we have the Radiance into the uh, AC onto the Kanko, which is also being built by Paparazzi. So they're both kind of going for, like, the same exact item builds on both sides on each of your heroes. Yeah, PSG LGD looking to fight. They're feeling a big power spike coming in after these last few moments. And the build-up in this game is, it's been quite, quite phenomenal so far. Just only six to seven at 28 fine, minutes yeah. in. I mean, this has to be, be sort of one of the, the slowest build-ups in a game we've had so far this TI. Just... Yeah. Oop, Chalice will get used up as Stampede. First, he's just gonna protect himself, holding onto it as long as possible with that Crimson Guard and Pike and he'll be able to disengage. PSG LGD, they, have, they just have better forms of initiation as well in the fights too. Vici, they have great ways of counter initiation with that Warlock and also with the Blink Dagger of Paparazzi, but PSG LGD, they have a very comfortable hold right now. So it looks like one AC was finished, so AC Blink for Paparazzi. And they're looking like they're gonna try to use this timing to get something themselves too. Constant D-Wards and constant trying to control the map. Yes, you do. They're smoked up. Let's jump. Chalice. He's onto Paparazzi. Stun gets removed by the Aphotic Shield. Paparazzi tries to look to turn. The boat comes crashing down towards Fade. As Fade's dragged back into his death. They'll now turn towards Yang. Yang still has the ult at the ready. X mark back, but out comes the bar time. Paparazzi's Paparazzi in, in. But the chase still comes through. Ori pops the BKP. He's trying to bring down X Nova. Finds one. But the figure's already out. They pop the reincarnate. DY is Golem punching away at Somnus. But Somnus and Chalice, they're so tanky. Ame as well. BKP's out. They cannot kill these cores, Vichy Gaming, as they've got to try and get away. They can not escape. As Chalice's right click brings down DY. And these fights, even though the net worth's even, even though some of the items are, are pretty similar, it just seems like Vici Gaming cannot come out on top. They cannot kill any of PSG LGD's cores. They just do not have the damage output to match the, the resistances that they built up on LGD's lineup. It does feel like Vici, they, they had to play a little bit faster in that early game to shut down these BKBs. They're proving just to be so problematic every single time. BKB gets popped and they have nothing. They just have nothing to deal with those BKBs when they do come out. Sure, they have the Chaotic Offering, but as we've seen several times, they just turn and kill the Golem. Yeah. The Kanko just turns, hits it a couple oh, times. Yeah. Same thing with Ame. It just dies pretty quickly. It, it really does, especially when that messes up. Yeah. The Golem doesn't stand any sort of chance. All it is now is sort of a glorified setup. It, it's no longer that sort of damage that persists through the fight as it's taken out. Okay, they're trying to get the Roast here and they're doing oh, it pretty fast. I, There's it, no meta available for Ame either. They're heading over. Ame's gonna scout it out with the Illusion. It's got a full scout. He's ready to start a walk into the pit. They'll throw down the Torrent combo. Can anyone get in there to go for the Steel? Roshan still being focused by the Serpent Ward. It's up, people. It's slowing them all down. Chalice trying to step forward. He's going to have Stampy back up in a second. BKB's popped by Ori as he looks to push LGD away from the pit. Paparazzi getting brought down low. Roshan nearly turns to get him off. Roshan finally hey. falls. Ready to grab it. Ori's going to be able to secure the Aegis. Can they win a fight with the Aegis, though? That's the question. They've already killed off Ori the once. Chalice on the side, locked down by the Shackles. Will fall. Vici finally able to get a core out of the lineup of LGD. They've lost the Aegis. They've lost the reincarnation. They're going to try and chase. X Nova's there. Arme is obviously the dream catch. They'll get the support. Will they get Arme's into the trees? TP out. Will be successful. Whew. That was a scary one there for Vici. They weren't able to get that. Aegis actually picked up there. 
trying to, I mean, they took advantage there, right? They Meadow was down, trying to make some type of big heads up play. Even though we don't have chaotic offering or anything like that, we have to try to make something happen. Because like you said, the fights were not looking good for them. Not they needed all. to have something else extra for themselves. Got a little scary too, because FY stole fatal bonds there toward the end. So we can see, I mean, it, it was so close to, to maybe going the way of LGD, that Roshan. Chalice so close to the pit and being able to make a move, but Ori, good commitment with the BKB, forces the majority of LGD away from that pit so they can get back in, make sure they grab it. Stuns out from Ori, I believe, onto Chalice just as the Roshan falls, so no chance for Chalice to try and go for the pickup steal. And it is, it's a little bit of light, a little bit of, of a promise there from their lineup. Absolutely. Being able to kill off Chalice, but they do have to expend the Aegis for it, so now there's no Aegis to really make a play around with. It does bump them up a little bit in gold advantage. 2k lead now. Dota Plus still feeling confident with the lineup of Vici Gaming, despite what really does seem to be this, this flaw with their, their sort of heroes in the head-to-head -head matchups down the line. As even with that rush, even with killing off Chalice, it doesn't seem like the game's gonna get any easier for Vici Gaming. If anything, it's, it just looks like it's gonna continue to get harder. Army's just continuing to grow. The one thing they will have in favor, though, is that these BKBs were picked up very early. So those BKBs will tick down to the five seconds pretty soon. It's a six second one already on Somnus, and I believe a seven second one on Ame. So that's one thing they do at least have that can start to turn inside of those fights, as they are have very heavy magic damage focused. And now an item that I think is really important is Yang having a Lotus Sword, because I saw in a couple of these fights, he doesn't want to shield himself all the time. He wants to be protecting people. And every time a reflection gets popped, he actually just gets silenced. His own illusion just keeps beating on him, and then he gets silenced for the majority of the fight. So having this extra tool to be able to remove that is going to be important for him. Trying to have a bit of a poke on Yang, see if they can bring down the watch. In fact, the wrap around there on the back, they managed to get the jump on to Ori, but the turnaround comes through Fade. Has the shackles onto Chalice, separated for the rest of the team. Exit over, offers up a stun, and that'll allow Chalice to get away with the stampede. BKB's out from Fiji Gary, but Arme steps straight to the back with the metal offices, takes out Fade. They are buyback comes out from Faith. They want to try and turn this VG game, but with the borrowed time already used, Yang falls. The tier two is taken. The way they took the fight, they saw the Glimmer Cape come out from the Warlock. Ame just cuts into the tree lines there with the Kunkka. They kill DY. But they, DY they, has to drop a defensive rock on top of himself. And then from there, PSGOTD has full control of the fight. They've got a good amount of duration left on the Metamorphosis as well, so they can just walk up to the high ground. Yang is 200 gold short of buyback. So they cannot bring in the full team to offer this any sort of a defense. That's a Rax. As 34 minutes in, PSG LGD, they'll walk down the bottom lane. They'll take a very simple, clean melee Rax. There's just, even inside of the fights too, just looking, there's just so much damage mitigation coming out. You see the bad and sure, we were talking about how he's matching the build of Chalice, having this Crimson Guard and all that, but between Crimson Guard, Pipe, and, his, and the Rum, I'm seeing heroes on the side of PSG LGD just get tickled. They, the they just King, don't take any damage. Wraith King is hitting the Centaur, and it's doing like, 100 damage, maybe something like that per hit maximum. They're just really tanking up a bit too much here. Still only hit 2k gold advantage. Just, I mean, this is astonishing that they're able to keep this gold like this for Vici. I mean, the skeletons in particular, of course, paparazzi getting a lot of that farm, but they're keeping it very close here, even though the fights are, we're seeing them pretty, be pretty dominant for PSG. Well, that's the thing, you know, the kills are close, the, the gold is close. I think if anything is, is at the moment, it just feels testament to to the drafting of PSG LGD. Being incredibly strong here in this first game, their lineup just seems so robust and hard for Avicii Gaming to do anything about. They've got all the answers, they've got all the items. Yeah, Ori just can't deal the down of damage. That, like, Ori can't do damage in the fights. He just runs in, he pops his stuff, but he's also at risk of dying because, like we said, such high physical damage that comes out from PSG LGD. So he's got all his armor items now too, but he's still only 1900 HP. Off the back of these objectives and time being given, FY. Just 200 gold away from having Agonims on Rubik. So you can expect these fights to, to continue very thick and fast. The, the amount of spells FY is going to be able to get out. Yeah, he's got in. I mean, he's been still shielded quite a bit here. He's also taken a couple stuns from the last strike in some of the fights. Nothing like super flashy in this one so far here, but he's been just doing his job of sitting behind, getting good, getting decent spells to at least protect people. Very sort of slow, safe performance from both teams so far, but the meticulousness that LGD's brought to this game just seems that little bit, a little bit more 
more safe and, and sort of able to, to fall back on this line of Ame. Butterfly is done. Another fight won by PSG LGD could easily set up for a, a quick tier two and a tier three to fall. Beachy Gaming, you've got to wonder what, how the discussion's sort of going down in the booth. What, what is the plan? What are they building towards? What is what is the move that they're looking to make? Is is it sort of just a hope that an overextension comes out from PSG LGD? Is it a case of waiting, trying to, to continue to poke these BKB charges out of them, try and get them to, to use Metamorphosis in a defensive position, fight when it's not up? How do you tackle this game? that seemingly is close, but at the same time feels so hard for Radiant. It's just so hard for them to get any type of like great engagement where they can actually just lock someone down and chain lock them down because Stampede gets popped and yeah. they'll just kind of run away and disengage or get on top of the heroes that they want to. So PSG, they just, LGD just has a much easier way of choosing the fights they want to take and how they want to take them every single time. Even though there is, of course, those counter initiations coming out, Vici still just can't take the same type of fights on their own accord. So PSG LGD just gets on top of the heroes that they want to. Quickly blow them up. Paparazzi trying to amp up that damage. Bloodthorn's what he's hoping for. Will take him a fair bit of time, Ori. Shiva's guard gold is nearly there, but the speed that LGD push, you've, you've got to imagine that Vici Gaming is going to be holding on to those buybacks. Smoke on smoke. Vici Gaming starting to enter LGD's jungle. LGD. Sort of a step ahead, as they'll be the ones to first sweep over to the Radiant side. The scan will come out, won't connect onto anybody, so PSG LGD will know. They're not going to find any kills. They'll start to take the shrines, continue to clean up gold off the map, or he will be spotted in the river. They've got the high ground here. They do. This is a bit of an awkward fight for Vici Gaming, despite it being on their half of the map, and they try and look for it. Keeping themselves away for now, or he's just trying to shove out the middle lane. But that top wave has pushed around, and Vici Gaming Look to, to lose this top tier to, uh, two tower. I the mean, pushing speed going. is there. There's no reason for LGD to stop. He's hit 25 on Kunka. He's, he's got the tire ring. Oh, God. He's ready to he's just smash through well. these creep waves, uh -oh. smash through these buildings as it's another tower down. Vici Gaming unable to get stuck in at all. Is that CFY? He's, he's even restolen the shield as well. So. Fatal Bonds comes out, he just shields it off his teammates, and he's gonna just gonna keep, keep yep. able to do that every single time they do try to throw out any type of lockdowns or stunts onto them. So immediately they force rotations back, and they're just gonna back up. They're happy with that, and they forced. See so if they uh, scout out Roche, has just respawned. Could very much be the ticket that allows PSG LGD to, to potentially even just close this game down. Yeah, they've got a gem, so they're clearing out that vision around outside the pit. They've got high ground vision to keep tagged up when Vici does come outside. And Ame already starts to walk toward them. They see DY trying to D ward. They don't want him to. That's the one threat that they want to get out of the fight. Make sure there's no bonds, make sure there's no golem. There'll be a buyback coming out for DY immediately as the fight will continue. Yang is the focus for now, starting to stand himself in between himself and Ori, making sure Ori can get out the ward to drop, but Xnova's able to force himself out as the Serpent wards will pretty much do nothing at all. Xnova able to turn with the Star Hunter Power Prancy. BKB now parts Ori and Fade, making a move straight towards the, the squishier kills. They'll get Xnova, he also having buyback ready, he turns straight back towards the fight. They'll get towards FY, they've killed the two supports. Now can they get the cause? Ame, BKB's pop, Metamorphosis is out. This is where the difficulty gets stepped up for VG Gaming, can they do? with this Terra Blade. Glimmer K buys DY some sort of safety. Yang turning towards them, looking to push them back. The Fatal Bond still upon the four of them. Torrent onto the two. PSG LGD starting to back up. This would be a huge kill if Fiji Gaming could find it. The Stone Control, it's there. The Shackles, they've found him. They'll take Ame down. Fiji Gaming finding the big bounty. An instant buyback though from Ame. He wants to keep bringing the fight to them. Even FY bought back and x to try to join over there. How many buybacks total was this? Like six? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five total buybacks coming out in this game. As Vici, they punch back on top of their shrine there, and like Ooh, said, Roche. Roche is available. It is. Paparazzi. Is anyone gonna die back? That's the question. This could be a turning point in the game. Arme has to be careful. There's no meta for 68 seconds. BKBs are at the ready. You've got to push for this Vici gaming. You know that it's this game is a rough one, it's a tough one. You've got to take anything that gets given to you. They have this timing. 
They're looking for Roche. BSGLG will be sure to, to try and contest it. They'll step in. Stuns out onto Chalice. They're surrounded. BKB popped by Peremperazzi as he locks down. The bomb's over. The Chalice has the Kukas Rama with the Scarlet Pop. It. He looks to try and chase down Ori. Ori's going to be the focus. And Glimmer for DY keeps Ori safe. They turn. Stuns out. Chalice is getting control. And it's all enough on shield by him sometime, but it's not enough. Chalice force buyback comes out. Same to be said by both Ori and Yang. As the two cores will fall on Vici Gaming, Paparazzi as well dies to one. Ames on top of the Paparazzi gets the blink out off the back of the reincarnate. The Sentry Warden walks in the vision today. That's the way they turn back in. Chalice in with a who's top Torrent Combo. They've got the bat. Paparazzi dead without buyback available. X Nova has got the lockdown on the side to finish off Bane as well. As Vici Gaming, they took their chances. They tried for the Roshan. But they now will start to fall like flies as there's no buyback for Yang, no buyback for Paparazzi. PSG LGD know it's time to move straight towards the base. And GG, it's called. This one's over. That was some team fights coming out from LGD, just knowing how powerful they are and how they want to take the fights every single time. This centaur seems so crucial to me. I know Sam just had this amazing game on the Kunkka, just getting these tons of cleaves. His damage is going to be probably through the roof on the Kunkka, but just being able to pick and choose the battles every single time. I mean, absolutely. They this... always found the right targets that they wanted to go for in the fights. DY was struggling so hard to find positioning. This is sort of the, the terrifying PSG LGD that you expect to see here in the upper bracket. No messing around, no mistakes to be made, no overextensions. Knowing the exact limits of their heroes, their draft, and playing in a way that it just seemed unbreakable. It was from what, like the 15 minute mark onwards, we were asking ourselves, how did Vici Gaming even stand a chance? Yep. The BKBs, the timings that came out, it did feel like Vici, I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, get more done during that landing phase, get more towers down, so they could have a bigger advantage going into this mid-game. But PSGLGD, they got those BKBs, they took excellent fights, they used their buybacks really well, and they did not allow Vici to actually get that big advantage that they probably wanted to have in this game with this last wreck, with the Shadow Shaman push lineup. And a solid performance all round from PSG LGD as they look very clean cut coming into this series, taking game one against Vici Gaming. And so going to have to be some serious changes in the drafting, I feel, if Vici is able to stand the chance of taking a game off the big boys of China. PSG LGD taking the lead in this series. LGD really did look fantastic there. And to break it all down, we got Sin, we got Trent, and we have Dendi. So no. we, we got to take a pretty big look at everything that went on here. Vici being one of the very dominant teams this year, Sin, what happened that allowed LGD to get so far ahead? Well, it took a while, first of all. And yep. I think, I think yes, Vici has been one of the greatest teams of the year, but they also, toward the later stages of this tournament, and even in the group stage to an extent, have looked weaker, in my opinion, than LGD overall. So I was a bit surprised with how close this game was for so long. But Vici Gaming, I think their lineup was a little bit inferior in the playstyle that the game ended up playing. If you remember, the Dota Plus was favoring Radiant by like 3-1. to one. Yeah. It had really high tempo that it could perform, Wraith King, Shadow Shaman, Lishrak, they want to push towers and take control of the map, but LGD managed to slow them down, they got BKBs, and then it became a game of can't die versus can't die, but we can die for a bit longer than you. Or uh, cannot die for a bit longer. Can die, cannot die for a bit longer than you. Killing it. English. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I, think I, I yeah. think I understand. Dendi, when, when you look at these two teams, though, uh, what do you think? Do you think that LGD overall is the stronger team? I don't know. For me, there's two teams, uh, actually teams who can take the royal thing. They can win this tournament. And looking at those two teams, it was like, I don't know, looking in a book of Dota, you know? You, it, it's so polished. It's so beautiful yeah. Dota to watch. And both of them played brilliantly. But uh, yeah, it was getting harder and harder for uh, Vici to break through LGD after the game got a little bit delayed. Like Cinder mentioned, uh, BKB was actually a big problem for yeah. Vici. Yeah, the book of Dota. I like that. Yeah, the honey badgers and the bears. Dendi, you're just you're all about the the nice way of explaining it to everyone. And I mean, it's very nice having you on the panel. Actually, I heard Rich was was so excited to have you on the panel because he already told the story about the first time he actually even he met you, because he, he was so excited that he, uh, he he ruined one of his favorite pairs of pants. I believe. Thank you guys. While you're here, actually, if you don't mind. Thank you. That's our Thank host. You. Thank you very much. Yep. That, that's awesome.
Yeah, that's okay. awesome. You, want, you know what else you is want awesome? Me, Rich, that, or Trent? No, <laughs> no, send no, no. low. You know what else is awesome though? Wow, what we are like seeing in the Dota right now from these guys, and I do want to kind of you hear polish. Polish is kind of going to be the term that's going on when we talk about why these teams look so good. Mm. What is it though that you want to see change on the side of Vici if they're going to be able to take this next game of the series? Uh, well, for me, maybe it's uh, when I think Terrorblade, I think Ame. When I think Ame, I think Terrorblade. But he's not a hero that you see all too often. Maybe it's something that. Like, Vici have to still respect that, even if he's not going to be the most popular hero at the moment right now, because uh, LGD have just always been extremely good at playing around both that hero uh, as well as that style of gameplay there from Ame, just like the super hard carry stuff. So I like the idea that they had when they tried this faster push. Uh, it just comes down to execution and, uh, well, as you put it, polish. I do kind of want to ask Dendi right now while we do have him on the panel, though. Overall, when we start to look at the meta that's somewhat forming here at TI. I know it's one of the most popular questions that we do get quite frequently here when we're checking Twitter and everything on the panel. What's your idea of what the meta actually looks like here at TI? It's hard to say. I still see that every team plays differently. And let's, we see Vichy and LGD here, and they have a, their own play style of Dota, very stable, very balanced drafts. They do uh, very slow games, we're not rushing anywhere, we're farming up their items, we're doing their stuff. Or we see OG who is going like crazy and <laughs> yeah. diving everything. We're going into your fountain, Bristolbeck turns back and two, 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 <laughs> killing everybody. So it's hard to say uh, that there is some kind of meta, there is so many things and we might see so many things more. Who knows, maybe we're gonna see a carry patch. I do think yeah. there's there's something that I've noticed across the tournament that is a bit more prevalent than before, and that's the idea of having a clear frontliner. And I think that's the reason that a hero like Centaur, I think, was integral to this game. That's the kind of hero that you might want to ban out or look into the next game of how you're going to approach solving this problem. Good to rally around, yeah. Yeah, another person who's good to rally around is definitely Slacks. Luckily for us, we <laughs> get to take it? a <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a look at what Slacks was up to. Thanks, guys. So, Casey, as we learned earlier today, you have secretly been studying some Mandarin. Yes, a little bit. How much? Uh, two and a half months or so, mm. the basics. That's really great, because now I know that we get a wonderful translator for free. Casey, we're going to do a nice <laughs> okay. interview. You're going to translate everything, right? Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Yes. You will. Yes. You will, because you are so proud of yourself for your two months that you snuck in. So, let's start off with an easy one. Hello, sir. What is your name? Robert. Robert. Who is going to win TI? OG the repeat. OG the repeat? You you believe it? Everyone should. They're playing the best Dota. Oh, that man does not believe it, sir. All right. Easy first start. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Okay. I would like to ask my friend, what was your name, sir? Uh, Kala. Uh, 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 I can ask him his name. Well, I want you to grade her and tell me how good she is, okay? Uh, Ni Shima Jiao. Uh, Chinese name? Zhang Hao. Zhang Hao. Zhang Hao Han Mei. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Xie xie, xie xie. All right, chill, chill out. Chill. What? Hey, very handsome. What? All right, how was she doing? Um, She's very good. Bro, all right, hold on, hold on. Bro, how is she actually doing? I just have to say, she's very good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Attaboy. Who is the most uh, uh, surprising pick of the tournament, in your opinion? Um, <clears throat> uh, ta, uh, shi yi ge, uh, go. Ta shi yi ge what? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Ta, ta shi uh, yi ge go. Go. Go is what? Go is what? Tashiga uh go. 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 I know. What? She tells me she tells me you are a dog? No, no! Wow, wait, hey, what? No. I do have a dog. That is not the question I asked. Are you I'm asking about Dota heroes. What did you learn? This is Well you would learn the basics and then you work your way up. Try another one. Try another one. Okay, this. okay. Right. Sir, who is your favorite team? Oh, I know this one. I know this one. Uh uh Nishihuan Nagadoi. So in Chinese, so Lao Gan Die. LGD. Oh, LGD. 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 He said he said LGD. Yes, thank you. I got it. Thank you very much. Great. All right, complicated question. Um, can you ask her a question? How old are you? No, no. <laughs> Sir, I'll answer. I'll answer. <clears throat> 18. Da 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 da. Uh, 
是啊，吧、uh, ？ You see that? I don't know what you said, but he wasn't buying that shit. <laughs> what did she say? Uh, she says she's eighteen. Eighteen, Casey. How was she doing overall? <laughs> Very well. You guys are so nice. You're too nice. All right, I want to learn something. Can you guys teach me something to yell out in the crowd when uh, LGD's playing? They're winning. They're kicking ass. Or OG. Can you teach me something to say so I can scream it out? What's a hype word? Uh, I can teach you yes. something. Uh, uh, when LGD wins, yes. we always say, "Lao gan die dong dong dong." What does that mean? LGD, come on, come on, come on. So what was that word? Don't what one more time. 老干爹，咚咚咚咚咚咚。老干爹。All right, start us. Here we go. Are you ready? One, two, three. 老干爹，咚咚咚。Oh, I feel it. Thank you, guys. Great job. Well done. Casey, keep working. 谢谢。谢谢。Thank you. Okay, what I had meant to say was 他有一个狗。Not you are a dog, but you have a dog. Ah, what thing a dog? Uh, Mr. Ru? Shishi. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying, and I appreciate you challenging me. I didn't learn anything. I'm sorry, guys. They they asked me to learn stuff, but I was just grinding Dota games. So, sorry, everybody. Love Dota, though. Casey. Yeah. I'm gonna say something in English or in Chinese. I want to hear you <laughs> say. Yeah, I want to hear you say it in English. All right, you ready? All right. Okay. Be zoi, Kyle. Oh, I know that one. Thank you, Rich. P zoi. B zoi, Kyle. B zoi. I did not learn zoi. Maybe but you, you should have. You could say. You could say. You could say. Um. Um. Wada. Uh. Wada ni. Uh. Wada. Hang on. Hang on. B zoi, Casey. No, no. Wada ni baba. B zoi, Casey. Wada ni baba. Casey. I am your dad. Okay, yeah, I've said that one before. I definitely have. <laughs> well, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you uh, I should take it back. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, guys. Thank you guys very much. Jeez. So let's see. Do you guys... <laughs> Do you guys know more Chinese than... So when I first arrived at... Uh... China, it was 2010, Wuhan. Yeah. Uh, someone told me how to say, I love you. And huh? it was like, what I need. And I was going around the streets and telling to every single person I meet, whiny, whiny, whiny. And it was like, they were looking at me like, is, what, what's happening? I'm sure yeah. some of the people said what Casey just said to you as well. Like the Dota daddy right here in Dendi. But now we do have to put our attention back on this matchup. And it's going to be two teams from the same region. And before we start seeing what they're actually going to be bringing in this next game, I do kind of want to ask you, Cinderin, if you feel like the teams from the Chinese region have maybe adopted a play style that does somewhat mark how the region thinks about the game. Mm. I would say this last game was the one where the Ch two Chinese teams played the closest to each other in style overall. Like there's still some, some differences. The biggest difference was in draft, but they kind of played the game like they had the same idea. We're gonna win this game in a 30 to 40 and then the yeah, region yeah. just didn't win the game at 30 to 40. So, uh, but as far as the map goes, where they feel like they should be invading, what areas are safe, what areas are difficult, how you ward, how you rally around your, your teammates, how you use a frontliner, how you use backliners, it's very, very similar. And now our teams are going to be taking the stage. Let's see who is going to take this next game. We got both of our teams definitely having the energy of the crowd behind them, but first we're gonna be taking a look the team that was able to take the first game. Let's see though what Vici will have in store this time around. That last game definitely did look relatively convincing. Are we going to see a 2-0 in this top portion of the bracket to send Vici Gaming down to that loser's bracket? Or will we see it go all the way to a game three? This next game is definitely going to be very interesting, but from what we've learned already, there is so much interesting facts that we don't know about these players yet. Luckily, we're going to be able to take a deeper look at the team itself of the players of Vici. Wow, I think this is too strong. This is a 
，这是我们的故事线吧？哎，开玩笑吧，因为我们现在我这次就要破纪录。奥迪克太太牛逼了，奥迪克牛逼啊，奥迪克吃多死，呃，厉害在全方面吧，就不论是游戏理解还是英雄的认知程度，都比我们广。奥迪克帮我提升的其实挺多的，他的团队里不仅像一个就是那个教练，也更像是王大哥吧，像你们。啊！滚过去！奇迹，所以一个团队，信任来说，对信任更重要。所以一个团队，必须要是一个团队，团队这两个字很重要。我觉得赢的美酒对我们队来说意义重大，因为本来大家就是一群新人，刚刚我也说了，很缺乏自信，因为赢了一个，就是含金量很高，像美酒级别的这样一个赛事冠军的话，会让大家在内心里肯定自己，肯定队友，我觉得这个非常重要。相对来说，夺冠之后，我觉得可能大家都更自信了吧，就打法什么的都会比以前来更好。现在中国队的话，我们跟老干爹状态，我们这两个队差不多，但是跟比起像世界级、世界级强队 ，BP 啊、Secret 和 EG 的话，我觉得还有点不足，没有他们稳定。说实话，肯定是希望危机是走到最后的中国队啊，但我也同样同时也希望有中国队能夺冠。因为第一次在中这个在 TI 做中国版嘛，所以可能会比较觉得特殊吧，就想着就是打好自己吧，行，就是不能把遗憾留在中国吧。像我个人的话，我也算是现在为数不多的还就是留在赛场上，像以前遗留下来的老人吧，我也不希望变成一个孤巢老人嘛，希望还是能拿出点成绩来，证明自己还是可以的。T.I. 的话打了有，这第三届吧，站在主舞台，就是到场馆的时候，感觉那种感觉特别好吧。然后就想一直在这个舞台打下去。我觉得今年的 T.I. 如果 V.E. 夺冠的故事线的话，应该就是因为我们一直以来都不太被人看好嘛。我觉得我们故事线应该就是在胜这组遨游吧，就一直在想着胜这组遨游，不想下去。如果能真的拿到 T.I. 冠军的话，感觉这应该是一个。励非常励志的故事哦，从 minor 冠军到 major 冠军再到 TI 冠军，一年之内，不敢想，很童话了。Folks, definitely getting very excited for this series. I think that this was one of the series, Trent, that I was actually the most excited for, just to see what the heck the crowd was going to do. Yeah. And it, it definitely hasn't disappointed. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like those uh, those matches when we're back in Seattle, right? Where it's like kind of, it's kind of the same idea where the, the crowd can rally around both teams, be it uh, someone like, of course, like Navi and Alliance, right? You think like it doesn't matter really regions and stuff. Everyone's just super excited. EG OG last year, I think the same idea of just super excited for the Dota. And here it's just even more intense intense because there's this you know this idea of just like your entire nation everyone's just so proud of the players coming from there and see them both battling out on the stage uh, it's absolutely incredible to watch and yeah i mean we but we all took our headsets off after the the first little panel we did we couldn't believe how loud it actually was in here yeah i turned to dove and i was like wow i like didn't even realize yeah. that it, it was actually like these these headphones obviously are slightly noise counseling but we know that they are going to be getting loud yet again as they do actually step to the stage right now we have both of our teams in place lgd currently going to be leading by one we're in the upper portion of the bracket whoever does lose this series will still be with us but they don't want to drop down to that losers bracket which is absolutely infested with top teams let's see who's going to take this series PSG LGD versus VG Gaming. Game two. A team turned into a brotherhood. VG Gaming being down a game now. I've got Insania as well as Boxy joining me once again. Gentlemen, what do you think about that last game? What was really the key point for you? Uh, I think the key things in the last game was you basically saw LGD go for this draft where if they managed to stall the game out and slow it down and, you know, use Kunkka, use these heroes that they had to deflect the pushes and the aggressive gameplay that was coming out of the Slash Rack and Rasta, they would rely upon the TB to eventually carry the game out. Whereas Vichy Gaming wanted to close the game out before the TB really was a relevant hero and just abused the fact that they were so much stronger in the early game. 
And uh, I think both teams had a way to win that game, but LGD just executed their game plan much better. And so what does that mean going into our draft for game two? I think Vichy might try and play a little bit more of a map control game because they played a very deathfall kind of lineup last game where they had Abaddon and Warlock. These heroes don't really have any lockdown, but they have a lot of teamfight presence. Uh, and since they felt like they couldn't do it, it didn't work out. Maybe they're confident to try the same thing again, but if it were us, we would probably try to change it up a little bit. Yeah, I think they, they probably also realized, like, they even banned out the left track already, so they, they're taking it a bit of a di different direction. Maybe they felt like the best way to deal with LGD was this approach that maybe isn't their most comfortable playstyle. It's, of, of course, among the styles that they play. It wasn't a draft that I think was, like, new to them or anything like that, but maybe they feel like if they can match their pace a bit more and instead of trying to set this, like, off-tempo game where if the game drags on, they lose, but if they win fast, they are they should be able to do it easily. Try to just match the tempo and get a more even game. Does mean Elder Titan will sneak out into the pool. First pick for LGD. Yeah, it's a very strong hero. Seen a lot of play this TI. I yeah. think it matches very well with Manic Damage dealers, since the aura, the spirit gives like a Manic Damage reduction aura. And LGD tends to pick a lot of Manic Damage lineups. Yeah. Um, so we might see some Zeus or Lina or anything like that to combo with the ET for I think also it just fits how they want to play. They tend to play X Nova on this like lane winning position 5 hero, and I'm expecting him to be playing this other Titan. Also, it, it does a good job of slowing the game pace down. It's one of those heroes that you can position it behind a tower and just keep stomping out waves and slowing the game down. So, if for whatever reason Vichy Gaming were about to do something similar to last game, they would already have like a good start to uh, build a draft off of. Yeah. Well, when it comes to lane winning, that duo that was just picked up by Vichy Gaming, the Sand King Marana, that's going to be hard to beat. It's very strong. It has a lot of damage with levels, but I think that in early levels, if you have something like a Nyx or something similar, or even a Spectre, I think it's pretty good. Uh, you can definitely survive the laning stage, but I do think that the map control coming out of it, like Sand King can defend your towers, it pushes out lanes, it's very hard to kill, and Potom together with Sanking or any other stun can pretty much kill anybody alone on the map and it's bottom ulti to get runes to be like maybe ward out, smoke, whatever. Yeah. So they're definitely going the map control already with those heroes. We saw that um, when Sanking was first introduced with his new Sandstorm that this hero was being picked up a ton mm -hmm. and what a lot of teams were using was to be able to defend these towers who's so hard to push into a Sandstorm with like a Sanking uh -huh. hiding in the trees. Do uh, you think that's like another reason it's being picked back up in time for TI? Uh, I think, I think. Yeah, I mean, of course it's always going to be part of it. It's one of his many strengths, but uh, I think a more prominent reason is like the rise of the other heroes that surround Sanking, like the position fours like Mirana that have come into the pool. You see Lashrak much more frequently. Even heroes like Faceless Void com com like played the draft makes sense to have Sanking with them. And I think that's a big part of why the hero has risen to popularity now again. Yeah, for sure. Okay, a lot more about the the synergy. I can yeah, and like matchups in general. Yeah. yeah, I don't think the hero himself has changed that much over the last month or whatever. It's more so the surrounding heroes. Ogre, oh, that hero just seemed to come out of nowhere just in time for Ti, and yeah. he's been just dominating everywhere. This core ogre. Uh, when did you guys first like? discover this core ogre that I'm not sure who actually was the first to really run it and what you guys think about it? Um, we saw it. We saw some other teams playing it a while ago and I figured it feels pretty good. Um, ever since they changed the multicast chance to be very high and now that you can use items, you can buy Midas and accelerate like crazy. Yeah. That was like always the problem before playing core ogre. You never got any items. You were like super poor. Um, so that made it very strong and I think now it should be on the off lane since ET is normally their 5, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time it is their 5. I do think FY can also play it though, so the possibility of an Ogre 5 is there. Um, but I think the, the big change for Ogre was when the Fire Blast stun fully stacked. Yeah. So you yeah. get like a 3 second stun on a multicast. Yeah, no, that's very um, And I think after that a lot of people started picking it up again and trying him out and then you realize, you know, this hero's not too bad. <laughs> the, one of the ways I like to think about it is that Medallion and Solar Crest mm. have been really important items in this current meta. And What's better than one solar crest than a multicasted solar crest? It's just crazy that you can do that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's very fun. They recently increased the item buffer range as well. So before you would have the problem with, well, you cast it on one guy, but then there's only like two or 300 units for it to reach on anybody else. I think they buffed it up to 800. Yeah. So you can basically hit somebody on the other side of your screen with your items. <laughs> so like you, hex, you just run in, hex one guy, and like their backline supports are also picks is running around. Yeah. 
Believe me, I tried it. As soon as they made that change, I was like, all right, I'm going to get the cast range talent, Ether Lens, yeah. and Rod of Atos, and I just want to see what, <laughs> what the max distance it can go. Yeah, it's, very it's pretty fun. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So LGD actually banned out Kunkka. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I feel like it's a very interesting ban. I feel like it's a hero that kind of morphs off its stun than it does Vichy. Um, the only reason I can really see for it is that you don't want to give Mirana this free X setup. Yeah, it might be a fade of the arrow combo. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to play this mid heroes that match well into it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then there's so there's like Odie and Kunkka, right, that are the primary two, and then I think there's Ember Spirit and Storm, which are like slightly worse, but they can also be this Mirana setup. So it could be part of the reasoning that they're trying to look to set themselves up for heroes that they want to pick against Ember and Storm specifically, or OD. Is and there any like, mid heroes that you're really scared of Kunkka? I mean, there's Brood. Uh, yeah, I think that most of the ranged heroes are going to be scared of the X into Mirana combo that, yeah. don't, that don't have an escape. Um, but specifically, like, yeah, Brood, I guess. Yeah, the but there's also, there. like, Lesh and Gyro are out, right? Yeah. I would think of them as pretty bad heroes into Kunkka. Um, Ember and Storm, I think, are okay. No, I, I think they're pretty good. I yeah. think they lane, they lane well and they're good in yeah. the game. So. so yeah, this is going to be an interesting pick from LGD, because they're going to have to reveal one of their cores. Either they're going to confirm that the Ogre is an offlane Ogre, or they're going to have to pick up uh, what would most likely be their offlaner here. I think LGD generally tries to keep their core picks for later on. Yeah, and I think with Mirana 4 and the Sven carry, they should be a little bit careful about our offlane trial lane. I think that, or even safe lane. I think the Sanking does very well alone, and it does very well, especially in the safe lane alone. And Ogre is... the hero tends to thrive when he can't be killed. Yeah. Um, and if you're into like some Mirana, Sven, plus another hero, you might just feed on the trial lane. Yeah. And it makes it a very rough to come back into the game. Yeah, the picture, I think the Kira is very strong as well to ward off any like aggro trial lanes. Yeah. Super hard to play into the dual birth. Absolutely. I think that, that was an amazing pick, actually. Yeah. And I think FY is going to be playing it as a position 4. LGD tends to run this like more farmy... Whichever of the two supports it has an easier time hitting creeps seems to be the one that FY is playing. Yeah. It's also... Uh, it's kind of beefy support. So even if Sanking and Potom would find him out in the open somewhere in the woods, he could probably survive at least for the first few seconds. Definitely one of the more tankier guys out there. It's also another hero that stalls the game for you as a support. That was something you mentioned yeah. for the Elder Titan. Yeah. Do you think with that idea, is LGD going to try and secure themselves better late game? I think they're going to try to. I mean, Vichy Gaming picked up their spend fairly early, right? So LGD is going to have a... They have the opportunity now to decide whether they want to try to, you know, match the pace or try to go for something more outscaling. And I think knowing LGD, they're probably going to try to play something more scaling. Yeah. And they ban Void and Lifestealer. I think I would have liked both of those heroes as a carry. I'm not sure what they would For LGD, carry. yeah. yeah. But it's, it's going to be a, a lot about the mid hero, I think. They don't really have any playmakers right now. Like Ogre, he can run in and he can be tanky, but it doesn't, he has kind of short range and it's not really a lot of mobility. So I'll, I think they have to pick something if they want to scale. It has to, have to be something that like enables their team to make moves and kill people. Oh, there yeah. you go. That's the carry. And you guys nailed it. There's your hard carry right there. Yeah. No, it's very good against like the Sanking and Potom, like I talked about. Yeah. The Spectre, he's, like his dagger secures you a lot of range creeps. And Sanking automatically pushes the lane. Either he skills Sandstorm or he skills his Caustic. Or you stun, and then you also stun the entire creep wave. Yeah. And since you're kind of tanky to desolate, you can dagger run out into the trees. Like It's hard to get a clean combo on Spectre in yeah. the lane. It's Definitely one of the bigger, like better counters to this dual offlane stun lane, I think. Yeah, and as a, I played with my fair share of Marana support, it's very annoying to play against Spectre, because even when he just presses Haunt, you, you're not really a hero that buys a lot of sustain, so yeah. just the damage you take from that sometimes forces you back to base or forces you to play very defensively in a fight, so... Yeah, both Lion and yeah. Marana suffer to getting haunted on. Like, yeah. one follow-up or even alone, to the Spectre alone, if For he gets sure. Manta, I think they're both dead. Yeah, Lion is one of the... Like, he has the opportunity yeah. to be one of the better heroes, but you're not always, like... You need to you instantly react right. to the haunt yeah. and hexing the illusion exactly. and raining it. But the Spectre has the advantage for sure yeah. because he knows when the haunt is going to come. So what is your thought process when you're put into this check position where the enemy team says, hey, we're going to pick this really late game hero. How do you deal with that just with one pick to go? I mean, I think if you're Vichy right now, like they, they changed up their style, right? I think there's two ways to basically beat um, late game drafts. One is you control the map and you don't let them get any farm and then you just win the game with an overwhelming gold lead. And the other one is what they went for in the first game where they try to just push the game and wrap it up 
as soon as possible before late game even as a factor. So they have a fairly good draft to control the map. If you look at their heroes, they have a lot of tools. They have a lot of heroes that can build into blinks, and they have heroes that are very heavy on damage. And these are like the primary two things you need. You're going to need to have catch, and you're going to need to like play this fast-paced pickoff game where LGD isn't just allowed to sit back, split the map in half, and farm. I think the problem for Vichy right now is they don't really have any way to get objectives. They're going to have to put something like a DP or some other type of tower yeah. pusher so they can get rows, get towers, and make sure that they keep the map small for LED. And LED is going to have to, once again, pick a playmaker or something like that. Tiny is banned out. They but need a stall here. Yeah. DK. Yeah. All right. I think they might DP on Vichy. The problem is they don't have a save for DT stall. Are you a bit concerned about damage? Picking up a DK like this? I think As LGD. I think that yeah. with having like ET and Spectre, I don't think you ever really run out of that. Like, I think you can run out of damage, but I think it's, it's kind of only in the early stages of the game. Okay. Um, kind of the way I see it. If Elite Spectre is farmed, you're always going to have damage because it's a hero that deals damage by tanking. So that like that early game is going to be their weakest point in Beach Gaming. That's the part that they're going to try and hit hardest. Yeah, I would think so. Before yeah. like before the Jack Hero gets a 4 stuff, before the Ogre gets a pipe, they're hopefully going to be able to get a few kills. I think the problem is that they're going to need to use so many spells to bring this DK down. And if yeah. any of their like stun flow is interrupted, like, you know, you want a sanking Blink Stun, Arrow, and then you want Lion to finger him or spend the follow up on that. Like, the damage to kill DK in of itself is fairly slow. So the opportunity for counterplays like ET stomps and ice paths and spectral haunting in and blocking the arrow or whatever, anything like this could happen, could really throw off the damage coming inwards. So that means that the DK can play very aggressively. Necro. All right. So that addresses the problem you just pointed out about being able to, like, yeah. you're going to run out of spells yeah. focusing on this DK. Necrophos just cuts that in half. Do you guys like that last pick? Yes and no. I think it makes sense for what they needed, but I don't believe too much in Necro as a hero of itself. Yeah. Fox, do you agree? It's, it's just... It's going to be hard for them to take towers and rows, but yeah. if they can snowball, I think they're definitely going to snowball very Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to see if... This is going to be uh, good enough. I think an interesting aspect about this uh, this draft is that you you see Vichy Gaming kind of like adapt to LGD, and I think this is something that usually gives you an indicator of which team thinks they're better than the other one. And Vichy Gaming in game one went with the push style, and now they're trying to play this more map control draft. And I think this is like it's a bit telling to how they see LGD and how LGD is just like, nah, we're gonna be us. We're gonna go late game, we're gonna farm, we're gonna pick these late game drafts, we're gonna do what we're good at, because if we do that, that's good enough for us to win. That's gotta be tough, going against a team that knows you so well. To have that kind of signature style, you would look like that the enemy team would know you so well, yeah. they'd be able to counter that. I think for sure it's hard for Vichy, because now they're pressured in another way, not really to take towers and be able to end the game, but they need to get a lot of kills, and they need to keep the map very closed. Yeah. So it's another type of pressure where you need to do well and you need to make sure that you shut down the enemy team. Whereas LED can play more patient and more relaxed kind of, or like they can sit back and be ready for what's coming. Sort of similar yeah. to the game one. And is that why we see like so many of these later game lineups because there's just, TI has so much pressure already right. that just being able to keep a little bit off of you by saying, we don't have to be the ones playing flawless here, they do. Yeah. For yeah. sure, for sure. It helps, it helps. and like. When you're the team responding, you have a bit more time to think things through. When you're the team that needs to be hyperactive all the time, you kind of just got to focus on uh, where do we move next? Where do we need? Where is the next micro move that we need to make? But the team that's playing for late game generally has a better macro view of the game. All right, let's get this game two started. But first, we've got ROTK with Casey. ROTK, one of the original true Dota gods. I will take whatever you are willing to share with us about how you feel about the draft. <laughs> I feel like it's 50-50. <laughs> a very fair, fair assessment. Thank you and good luck. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Casey. 50-50, says RTK on this one. An interesting approach compared to some of the, some of the coaches that come out and say, ah, easy, you know, easy draft. We are drafted them up. 50-50, a lot of respect there from uh, from the big man himself. And yeah. Looking at the two drafts, would you, would you sort of agree with RTK on this one? You think it's a, a close one? They both have their benefits, right? Like the, uh, the draft panel was talking about it too. Vici, they have a very aggressive, you look at them, they have stuns aplenty, lots of ways to lock heroes down, lots of ways to apply that damage, and lots of burst damage too, if they can control the map and if they can come out of their lanes well. But I look at LGD, they not only did pick a late game insurance, they also do have some pretty tough lanes. Jakiro, as we've seen, has been 
dominating most laning matchups. Same thing with Ogre, and same thing with ET. These three heroes, they're very strong in the laning aspect. So we'll see if Vici is actually going to be able to kind of run over and get that big advantage and yeah. get that map control that they're really going to need versus a Spectre line. They've, they've got to do it. They've got they to do really it quick do. because yep. Yep, yep, yep. it's it's a similar problem down the line, right? There's going to be so much beef and brawniness on oh. LGD's side that the I late haven't. game is not going to be fun. I haven't gotten to see this set yet in Oh, person. it's beautiful. It's Ori. the beautiful Ori Necrofo set. We'll has take he, a look at it. He's got it all right. He's got the bird boy, the it's southern it's rampant beautiful. as well. Yep, it's beautiful. I estimate he is ready to, to flex on LGD. And we'll see if he can do so. It was a tough game one for VG Gaming. They've switched it up a, a little bit and, yeah, to the point that they have so much sort of potential to kill early on, right? If it, as sort of the, the draft panel was saying, if they can get the ball rolling, start moving around with Ori, taking people out with the Reaper's Scythe, this game is going to get played at a pace where there's not necessarily going to be the same amount of space for Arme as he got in game one. Absolutely. I like how they on uh, PSG LGD, they, they tick the boxes though, right? We were saying early game, late game, middle game. They even have tower push thrown in too. With that Jakiro, with that DK last pick, they're going to have ways to also try to trade and take fights as well. And look to pressure those towers while VG is trying to do the same thing. So here we see the runes, the race to the top rune, Ame and Yang. <laughs> the dagger speed able to secure that one for Ame. Nice. That's going to get the edge man. once again to PSG LGD to start with three bouncy runes for them. <laughs> it was so funny because he threw the dagger like 10 seconds ago just to get the movement speed. He's like, nope, sinking. Not going to let you get two because the stun. So there we see the lane swap immediately having, e happening. X Nova wanting to go up top. He has a sentry ward on the ET to be able to try to zone out Yang as best as possible on that sinking. And they, yo they know Yang has the stun level one too because of that bounty run next year. Now we're going to have to watch both side lanes be very careful with the positioning as both sides certainly having the early game stun and damage to get kills in these laning stages. Man, this, this pressure lane by LGD though is, it's pretty damn strong. Ogre and Jakiro, two of the strongest early game. They, they got Paparazzi down to less than like a quarter HP off of their first nuke combo just from getting, giving him the right click. And immediately we see the Miranda's already moving. Fade initially wanted to get the first blood started bottom just so they could get a good start for Paparazzi, but that's not gonna be the case. He wants to secure Yang now. Let's see what the state of the, the region on the bottom lane for Vici Gaming. They've got five tangos on Paparazzi. No salves on the two of them. And we'll see Paparazzi constantly just tangoing himself up to make sure that he can withstand this early game aggression from FY and Chalice and get a look in at the creeps. He will not have fun down here. I, I, I'm pretty sure of that for Paparazzi. He has a lion protecting him. As we've seen in the last game too, the lion not able to provide that much inside the lane phase. And as we said too, he's versus two of the strongest laners currently in the game, that's Jakiro and Ogre. So it could definitely be a tough one for Paparazzi. That's what you see immediately. DY is like, I don't want to lane. I'm pulling just to get the creeps under the tower so that we, we can have Paparazzi try to get some farm here. And so on the other side of the map, the, the top lane, you know, Arme, what sort of pressure is he going to be feeling? Is there going to be a certain level when suddenly this lane becomes uh, a little rougher for the Spectre against the SK or with X Nova by his side? Is, is this a pretty safe safe lane for Arme? I think for Ame it could be pretty safe. They could set up kills onto X Nova if he steps up too far, but I think Ame will be just fine. As they're actually getting aggressive onto Yang with that couple hero astral spirit that X Nova had. But yeah, lanes are looking extremely good for PSG LGD coming off of this start. Mid lane could be the one that changes, but we see these we see Dragonite tend to farm really well, even if you're versus Necrophos now at this point. Now I'm seeing it. Hard stop Aurora, it's, it's magical. You know, before in, yeah. in the past, it was pretty devastating because you're playing versus your, your strength hero, but now you pick up your bracers and whatnot inside the lane phase. Every little thing it adds up and counts. That extra bit of magic resistance. And, and talking about some of the items, it's Somnus, and DK, Arme on the Spectre. What's the build? Who's getting the Radiance this game? Yeah, that's a good point. I think we could see Ame just go for some type of Manta build this game. Just wanted to put the pressure on. I think I, we may not actually see it, but we'll, we'll see. It could still be the Radiance on the DK, the Double Bracer Radiance, but not too sure if we're actually going to see it on either of them. Okay. Yeah, we'll see what sort of approach they want to take as this game goes on. Let's see if we see any Midas's cropping up in this game. There's a lot of potential buyers, as mentioned by the panel. And yeah. Chalice, he's going to be dreaming of Midas always. Always that want to get it when you're playing the Ogre Magi. Absolutely. He's going he's gonna to free farm down here. Like we see, 13-8. I think they've gotten, I want to say, at least five or six range creep denies now. I kept seeing him just making sure that they can pull the creeps onto the range creep over and over again. And Paparazzi, they're kind of zoned him, zoning him out of the lane. He's actually having to farm the pull from DY now. So 14 last hits, but you see the 15 and 8 of the Ogre and even 5 for 0 of the Jakiro. 
very good early start for PSG LGD as they're ready a 1k advantage and Spectre is not getting pressured. And whenever a Spectre is not getting pressured, you have to feel a bit concerned already. I mean, would you, would, would you have liked to see Vici Gaming sort of switch it up? Maybe if got Paparazzi starting himself up top in some sort of a aggressive lane situation against the Spectre. Oops, they get the arrow. They do. It's a long stun. I mean, they'll have it with the three of them. So, hey, that, that'll switch things around. Fade comes in to turn the tables on that bottom lane. A lane, as we've been talking about, was not an easy one for Paparazzi, and they open up the chance for first blood. They needed that. <laughs> They really did to bail out Paparazzi down here. And it's lined up perfectly. It was inside the creep wave, too. It just was able to clip him right in the middle of those. So the salvage at the start here, but immediately, TSLG will get aggressive on Paparazzi as soon as Fade leaves. They're going to start to So set much damage. And DY has to come in. It's Paparazzi just beaten entirely out of lane as soon as Chalice and FY are back to, to chase them down. They'll just turn towards DY. He'll get a hex out, but the dragon FY continues. Breathe down the neck of DY. Such a terrifying lane. <laughs> Playing carry versus this lane. I'm sure any carry player is like, oh my god, I would not want to be in that position of Paparazzi right now either. As we see bounties coming up, Paparazzi's going to make his way over. Maybe try to set up for an arrow. As it will fly, but we'll be off the mark. And they're chasing. FY's trying to turn. A big star still comes in from Fade, bringing FY down low. Fade gets the dragon. They'll lose Paparazzi in turn. <laughs> Continuing to trade kills down on the bottom lane, top lane, a bit of a dive coming in towards Yang, but he's underneath the tower and Ame. And next over already blowing their two spells. But they're getting the range creeps denied. They get both of those range creep denies. You see X Nova prioritizing those, trying to shut down the sinking. Yang's still having an okay time top though. Level four, almost level five, gonna be going for that veil build this game as we see a ton of magic damage coming out for Vici, of course. Yeah, we've seen a lot of success with the, the Veil first sankings, yeah. I feel, here. It's just so nice. It gives you everything, right? It makes you tankier, it makes everyone do more damage, it makes you do more damage, it gives you HP regen. It gives, yeah, it's just tons of sustain and all the mass pressure can provide. Another range creep deny from Ame. Yeah, interesting mid lane, it continues to be absolutely dead even. I feel like, you know, six minutes in, sort of the closest trading of farm we've seen in the mid lane. I mean, Heartstopper just does zero damage. It's completely counteracted by the Bracers and the Dragon, but it's the arrow bottom. Another poke on Chalice, there's three connect. of them. Trying to chase, but as you say, with that missed combo, Chalice will be able to walk him, himself back towards the tower. And I see he's already got phase boots and a gloves of haste on Chalice. He's already preparing to go for a Midas early on onto this Ogre Magi. Oh, he, he's certainly going to go for this one. Has the Reaper Scythe. Uh, one more Death Pulse and an ult will do it. He's trying to do his best to hide, but there's no escape for him. First skill there with the side from Ori. Get a bit of action and now towards bottom. They'll continue to try and go, but Fade again a little late with the follow-up arrow. Won't be able to find the connection. DY does line up the two-man stun to stop Paparazzi from getting into any trouble as FY and Chalice try to fight back. The waves under the tower. Chalice will be able to continue to find a lot of farm from this bottom lane. Yeah, Ori, Ori looked like he kind of wanted to make the rotation down bottom after he got the kill on the ET, but you're playing versus Dragon Knight. You cannot leave your lane for too long when that DK form is up and available, so immediately has to make the move. And like you said, we're probably likely to see a Midas coming out this game. Somnus queues it up. Getting those high levels on DK, sure, the attack speed's fantastic, but it really is a lot about the levels. I mean, DK, we see these talents, they're amazing. If you get that level 20 mark, we see these players take the 210 GPM, and you start skyrocketing the scale. Well, that's the thing. Could we see the, but so the, the holy trinity of triple Midas? Spectre's oh. got a gloves of haste. He's got a gloves. All right, Chalice's, they're, they're triple Midas, they're baby. Prepared for the, prepared for that late yeah. game. I mean, you look at their draft, and they have They got it all queued up. Game. Triple Midas. I feel like we, we've probably seen some games where we have like three Midases on the cause, but in terms of them all going for it sort of as their first item, it's not something that we see every day. And LGD, they say that's the best approach to this game. And if they can get away with it, VT Gaming, the, the, yeah. the heat is turned up even more. They, we said they have to play fast. They've really got to play fast. If LGD get away with getting three Midases online in the first 10 minutes of this game, the late game is, it's not going to be fun for Vici. No, definitely not. And you look you look at oh, Vici's draft, and them hitting them. buildings can be kind of difficult. They don't really have your natural tower pusher. Sure, they can get kills that can progress into towers, but them getting towers is going to be difficult. I think that's the idea going behind these Midases for PSG LGD. They're like, if we just get triple Midases, we don't lose our towers, we're going to outscale. Oh, absolutely. By a long shot. And they, they really will. They really will. Vici Gaming, they've got to be looking at... Sort of the gloves of haste on all the three cores and saying, right, we've got to amp it up. We have to punish this somehow. Yeah, got to turn up the pace for sure here as they're already starting to set up onto the mid lane here. Reaper Scythe is available. 
In fade, trying to have a bit of a look towards mid, but Somnus level seven, it's not, a, it's not a target that you're gonna have any fun jumping on. At the least you can try and keep him away from the tower. Get some right clicks and a, a bit of a beat down onto it, but killing the Dragon Knight, even at this early point, just with those two braces and those early levels, it's a very, very tough ordeal. The space is there for Chalice to take that tower. These early towers, early objectives, that's just going to fund the Midas's even sooner. They might get all three Midas's at pretty much at the exact same oh time. Oh my goodness. So we're about to have our mace finished up. Dragon Knight's almost approaching that one, and so is Ogre. Oh my goodness. We go mid lane fade. Turn, find the arrow, he's gonna look to lead in. Great stomp from x but catches both Ori and DY. They'll come in with the horn, they're looking for the fight here. They'll burn Sorry. down DY, Armace on top of the line. He'll fall, Reaper's out, down onto the DK, but Somnus, he's got the HP to walk it off. The two of Vinci, Ori and Dag have tried to oh step God. up, but another stomp from x but catches them out. It's two kills for LGD. Yeah, it's tried his best to turn and get Arme. He will find the Spectre, but it'll cost him his life as FY with the Ice Bath keeps the trade very favorable. For LGD. You know that LGD is loving that though. They are they are going Midas's and they're taking and they're the gonna fight get them. and winning the it's, fight anyway. It really is 10, 11, about 11 minutes in, you are going to see a Midas on Chalice, Arme, and Somnus. Uh -oh. How do you beat that? Oh, oh. Over. he gets rooted. Uh oh. oh okay. Uh -oh. okay. Did he get the triple stack? He got the triple he, stack. He did his job. He did, he his, did job. his job. <laughs> but he's dead for quite a while down here. But you know, and he's probably pretty happy with that stack anyway. Triple Midas. Triple Midas's and winning oh the fight. Goodness. That was Vici trying to get a fight so they can progress it into a tower so they yep. can keep something going there. But PSG LTD, they bring everybody there to make sure they do not. I just want to see when they're all out. So Arme's the first to grab his. Somnus has There's Somnus's. Well. And, and Chalice's. Is, is, it's coming. He's the last one to be delivered to, but it's on its way. So let's have a look. I want to see the exact timing. We're watching that clock. So it's 10 minutes, 37 seconds oh, in. Man. All three cores have a Midas. Did he multicast it? I think he did, I heard the sound. No, he did, he did not. Did, did you not? not? Okay. Are you sure? He did not. He did not, okay. But they've all got Midas' fog. What do you do? That just kind of like... They're already at a 2k lead. They're not losing any of the map. That the... likes a fire under Vici's ass. Oh they my goodness. Let's... Start making moves. And look at this. You see cooldown efficiency, of course. The first Midas usage is off by one second. And the stacks but are there. The Midas' and the stacks. Oh man, oh this, is, this has got to be daunting for Vici Gaming. They're going to see... All these Midas's, and what do they do? What do, you, how, what do you do? They have to just start pressuring towers, step one. So you see Yang immediately pressuring up top. Next, they have to start pressuring the next tower, probably in the mid lane. I think running around of four is their best option, while Paparazzi just tries to catch back up. Paparazzi almost has his Midas done, but I think they really have to apply the pressure here I mean, that's for the other four here. I mean, that's, yeah, sure, he's nearly got his Midas, but... There's already three on LGD. They haven't even got one on VG Gaming. Yeah, we're hearing the crowd. I mean, they're just I think they're just very them. excited about the Midas. Absolutely. I am. I am. Oh, boy. VG Gaming have to make something happen ASAP. They're, they're looking for it, though, right? You see them running around as a three. This is the triple stun kill combo. They have finger now for burst, too. But look at how much focus PSLGD is putting on the mid tower. They're like, all right, get ready. We have haunt. We, we should have haunt available pretty soon. Yeah, 10 seconds. Rally everyone around that mid tower. Do not let them try to take this one too early. Make them really work for it. Chalice. Midas is ready to use. A little bit of efficiency. Lost his waiting for the creep. Let's see if he gets a multicast. He's, he's priming it. He just used that ignite. OK. I want to step forward, get that Midas, Chalice. He'll push in, he'll push in. They're actually looking to set up instead. They are, they're, they're looking to go with the Horn. The Splinter coming down, X will come out for DY, but he gets dragged back by the ETO. They're on top of them with a brief fire. Yang tries to come in with the counter play, but the Macro is down, FY, making it ever so hard for Vici to fight, and they'll jump in with the Star Zone. Reaper Scythe is there, and VG Gaming will be able to turn, take out both Somnus and X Nova. Arme is being chased. Paparazzi's got the lead in with the stun. The rest of VG Gaming still looking to just put pressure on that mid tower. They don't want to try and waste time chasing the Spectre. They want to try and continue to get that map control. Take these objectives. Yang falling low. That actually leads in for more. Goes in with the stun. The follow from Paparazzi. They get Chalice as well. There's the pressure that we needed to see from VG Gaming. They'll bring it out and they'll get that mid one tower. I'm glad that they're really emphasizing that they need to put the pressure on, and they do. Even though LGD tries to respond and tries to fight with that one, they actually were pretty limited. I think Chalice had, like, no mana going into the fight before it even started. Because we saw him, like, igniting, throwing some type of spells, and throwing his bloodlust on the tower, but he only had, like, 60 mana. So, yeah, PSG LGD, they commit a bit too far forward, and Vici, they start punching back, getting map control, asserting their dominance, trying to take advantage of those triple Midas's.
Yang is going to be a big one to watch here soon as he's going to be very close to the Blink Dagger. So Blink, they're going to be looking to make more aggressive plays and it's going to be easier for them to set up for those arrows and kills. Back to the farm game for LGD. Back to the farming game. More than happy with any breathing room that they are given. Yep, X Nova's like, let's buy this, I'll stack. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what, Chalice is getting a little unlucky on the multicast. I saw. He'll get it eventually, and it'll make up for all the ones that he doesn't get. And anyway, what sort of builds are we seeing coming out after the Midas is? Definitely the pipe on Chalice. You look at the yep. heavy amount of magic damage from Vichy, makes a lot of sense. Always versus Necrophos is going to be excellent as well as Wilk Sanking. And part what? BKBs? BKBs and magic resistance probably, and yeah, it looks like Ame's just going to go for the Diffusal. Radiance feels like it's a bit too slow after the, if they're going to go for Midas. I think Diffusal is just a better item overall because the supports just can't play. They just die super easily and it comes out in an earlier time. Trying for some sort of setup with the Moonlight. Oh, mate. Back on the tower. F Y. Oh, set up. Not going to be hit by the first turn. Just turn for the for the fire, and that will allow Fade to find the connection with the arrow. They should have a good shot of getting this. Storm comes out to slow down Fade's damage output, but Paparazzi's already trapping F Y in. They'll find the dragon. Yang now also, while they do make this aggressive move down bottom, he has the Blink Dagger and he scouts the stack. This is important. Paparazzi has God Strength. He should be able to steal this one pretty oh, so he, nicely. He wants to raise it, but level 12 too. They're bringing everyone over. You've got you all they Paparazzi. They this. Uh -oh. He's going to walk away with a good chunk of this. He's, he's farming up the Ancients. And he's going to get the majority of it. He sure is. Takes it away straight in front of PSG LGD. Paparazzi is happy with that one. X-Nova's looking to make him pay. Stun's going to be out. Stomp set up into the ult. Stun is on top of him. Hell, they put with the horn too. Yep. Ame's ready to commit. They'll jump in the combo. The damage isn't enough to bring Stomp down. He's getting low. Or he, he's still full HP. Another stop. The, the control burning. from the ET holding them back. Stomp and F5 will be able to get out of there. Finger comes out from DY. Bursts up Chalice. Another fight where VG Gaming, they're coming out on top. Great. Invading right. LGD's half of the map. Taking away that ancient stack. Sure, Paparazzi dies. But that's a lot of gold that you've denied from LGD. That you've denied from Somnus in particular, right? He's the one who wants to farm that one with that level 2 DK form. They take that one, and they could have even gotten another kill out of it if Ori, he actually used the uh, the Reaper Scythe on the mid lane trying to kill the Ogre before the fight. So if they had that one in the they fight, would have had the they would have had the Dragon Knight as well. So still a big play there for Vici, denying quite a lot of farm from Somnus in particular. But they only do get what they get. Ex Nova is one chalice, and Paparazzi does go down. So, bit of even trade, but Vici is able to get what off and three of the bounty runes. It looks like one, two, three, yeah, three of the four. Keeping that edge is Ori. He's nearly got the Greaves. So, these early movements, it, it's definitely at this point of the game, Vici Gaming. They can get in and find these kills. That sure, the the three cores of LGD are tanky, but if they focus their efforts down onto one. They can certainly start the fights with a quick pickoff, especially with the high burst when Finger and Reaper Scythe are available. Yeah. And they're looking to continue getting aggressive. Every time Moonlight Shadow's up, they're looking to start making those moves. There is no haunt also for 80 seconds for PSG LGD, so they're just really trying to take advantage of all these timings here that they can keep aggressive and keep trying to just punish the Midas. They have keep to. Keep on punish the Midas. But you, and you really have to look out for if, if in a scenario Beach Gaming do lose a fight, that's when you've got to be incredibly worried for them. Yeah. You do not, you cannot afford to lose a fight against a team that's gone triple Midas. Yeah, you have to be the ones dictating the pace. You cannot let PSG LGD just sit back and farm. You have to be the ones just setting the tempo, getting these towers down, getting this map control. And they're doing that. They're all grouped up. Paparazzi joining the fray as well. After getting that little bit of surge increased bottom. And controlling the enemy jungle. Another tower taken by Vici Gaming. This top half of the map will fall in under, under their rain mid lane. They're looking for the connection as they'll get themselves straight in onto Ame with the epicenter from Yang. They should have the damage to do so. And his Midas is up when he dies. So a bit of a double benefit there for them getting that kill as they find Ame just a bit too far up. And Somnus, they actually saw him for a second. Well, they had detection, but they had detection. They don't anymore though. He walked out of it. He's able to keep himself away from them. Vici Gaming, they have the five of them pushing on mid. They're just. Trying to restrict the map as much as possible. Hulk will be back up as Ame respawns and just a few hundred gold away from having defusal. So suddenly the 
the damage that Arma is going to offer in these fights will hurt. Certainly losing the mana on some of these heroes. It's going to make it a little harder for them to offer that control unless they can get that jump first. They look to try and fight here with the arrow. Does connect onto X Nova. They're thinking about going in. They've got ways to protect these little clustered areas versus Elder Titan and Jakiro is not a place that you really want to fight. Even though you have your Sanking, he does not have his epicenter available. So those small areas are not not your jam right now. Yeah, they've done a good job of fighting around Yang so far. They have. He's making a lot happen across the map. 116 being sort of their, their main initiator. And for the most part, the, the, the majority of the damage output that Vici Gaming and getting these kills with. I mean, Yang and Fade, right? Fade is 4 0 and 6. He's 10 of the 11 kills with this Mirana being able to set up those arrows. And even the extra damage that does come from Starstorm with a Veil, it is quite significant. And they're grouping up. They look, yep, yeah, just keep that pressure going. They have the Greaves, as you mentioned, with that Necrophos, so they want to keep trying to put it on to LGD. They're tanky. I mean, they in, in, in the, the correct situation, 5v5, they definitely come out on top at the moment. So here we There's have the high ground positioning from VG Gaming, favoring them. PSG LGD starting to shift themselves towards the side of the map. They're ready to fight, though. They even Ame was pushing top. As soon as he finished the Fusal, he didn't send Courier. He TP'd back to base to pick it up. So they're expecting that VG Gaming is going to look to make something happen here. He's ready for the horn play. Yeah. The counter play if VG Gaming do try and commit behind this tower. 20 minutes. Bounty rune control down bottom. Will favor VG Gaming. They'll find the first catch as X Nova heads up to the high ground. Elder Titan's out of the fight. Another Ancient Stack taken by Paparazzi. As Vici Gaming continuing to get themselves over to LGD's half of the map. And making it very apparent that LGD with the Triple Midas is they know that they're not really ready to sort of head into this 5v5. They have to give the respect to Vici Gaming and sort of give them space, even though it's on LGD's half yeah, of the map. They, they don't want to get close to them. Yeah. They've got to let them sort of get away with taking these stacks and not trying to force a fight. All LGD need is time, and that time does have to be time without them feeding away unnecessary kills. They're playing it safe. Yeah. LGD needs every single one of the heroes currently in order to take any type of fight. Once they start getting more farm, their hero's gonna be able to take fights without every single one of them, but they're about delaying and waiting for the late game. Like the panel was talking about, drop panel, they say ET, Jakiro, these heroes are about stalling the game out, letting your carries farm, let you get to that late game. Avicii, they want to be playing on these timings. They now also have the BKB finish on Paparazzi. So they want to just keep running, keep putting the pressure on to PSGLDD. Do not let them back up and keep this farm going. Do not let them get these tanky items. Somnus almost BKB finished. They've got Pipe and almost the Vessel now done on Chalice. So now they have options and methods to be able to kill that Necrophos a lot easier if the Greaves do get popped. So we can't dispel it. Top lane. Creeps all the way around. Vici Gaming potentially ready to make a jump. And whoever comes forward here, and yeah, Yang's gonna try. He's revving up the epicenter. He's in straight away to look for Arme. The follow up battle, the jumper with the burst. They get the quick kill. Beautiful play from Vici Gaming as they set up for whoever comes to deal with that creep wave pressure. And it's pretty much the biggest kill they could hope for. Arme is the one that presents himself. And at this point of the game, you cannot underestimate the magical damage that Vici Gaming's line up to. Yang, no fear as he jumps in, makes that play. Arme's off the map. The space is there for Vici Gaming to just continue this high-paced gameplay and say, LGD, you cannot get away with buying three Midas's. Chalice gets jumped upon. He's a little tankier. No need to overcommit from Vici Gaming as they'll settle down, sit back, look for another objective. The tier two tower is taken. The way they pressured it was, I mean, the siege creep in particular. Yang was pinging it out constantly. He's like, we have a siege creep top. Someone's going to come back to defend this one. And yeah, easy little setup there. If it's the Dragon Knight, if it's Somnus there, they probably will not be able to set up for that kill as he's very tanky and he has BKB. Immediately when Ame dies too, he queues up a BKB himself. He's like, they're all magic damage. If I just get BKB, very similar to the last game, how the hell are they going to deal with me? The Sven, sure, has that high physical damage, but it's difficult as a Sven to stick on top of a hero like Spectre, even though they have so much to say. We're seeing some of the damage output numbers, especially that magic. Look how much Yang and Ori yeah. are doing this game. And impressive to, to note, you know, Yang being on par with Ori. And a lot of that damage sort of accrued in the laning stage when the Necrophos is just sitting there. That, that is a lot of damage. Yang, he's able to match that. So the two of them just being able to slowly bring down these tanky cores of, of LGD at this point in the game. And look at this move immediately. They see Ame on the map and they're like, Go fight Ooh. at the Spectre. We want to fight where he is, because then he can't haunt away. If we have all of our heroes set up around him, he can't actually get any way away from is him. Is going to show? That's where they want to take that fight. He's holding himself in the trees. They'll get some wards down. Fiji Gaming starts to, to get, again, some, some vision over 
LGD is out for the map. They're just ready with their triple stun combo, their quad stun combo for whoever does show inside of that lane. Oh, who's going to show? Next Nova. He's, He's tempted. He's a little close. The DP's coming immediately as they'll look to try and turn God Strength pop by Paparazzi. They'll take down the ET. Somnus goes with the Dragon Tail Stone trying to commit on a Paparazzi. Ice Path, Macro is down. They're burning through, but he gets the chance to put the BKB. Hex is out onto the Spectre. Paparazzi heads over. They're looking towards Arme. Yanks in again with the Burrow Strike. Bye bye. Comes down from both of them. The three man stun. Paparazzi's holding his ground, but he's falling low. They have the damage this time. PSG needs to turn around. Take this fight back on their own side. But Ori, big reap of sight. Cuts out Arme, but he's now being surrounded. X Nova, Chalice, and Sonus trying to finish him off. Greer's the pot. Stops it out. They'll force him to the side, but the fire of Sonus burns him out. They'll kill off Ori. And LGDs, can they find much more from this? They're eyeing up Fade. Does have the movement speed to get himself away. This time round, Vici Gaming. They looked for action. They looked for a fight. But LGD were able to stand tall, turn around, and take much away from VG Gaming as that lead the VG started to build will get shut down. They're still just very tanky on the side of PSG LGD. You see the Sven comes in. He gets a three-man storm member with his God Strength, but rallied around that, rallied around the Ogre Magi as well as that Dragonite. They just don't really have that much damage that's coming out just from Paparazzi after his BKB goes down. There's so much control for him. Yang. He's trying to get out of it with the Spirit Vessel. It's bringing him down. FY's got the lockdown. Yang's out. The magic damage and control coming out between Chalice and FY in those last two situations was way too much for Vici to handle. And a fight where Yang, unable to get his combo off, could not get in with the epicenter. Same to be said, of course, for DY. Didn't get the chance to pop the finger, so that extra bit of magical damage that we've seen Vici Gaming be so successful with it didn't fall into place. Yeah, they don't have the finger right at the start there. You see Paparazzi gets that jump, but he's getting controlled. Look at how much chain stun comes out. Three stuns, four stuns, the magic damage. He's already starting to tick down. Honk comes out, it's panic. Everyone needs to start running. Paparazzi, like we said, he gets a nice three-man stun, but his BKB is about to wear off, and he just gets completely controlled right after that goes down, and he's too low. And FY with a fantastic ice bath, just shutting off Yang from being able to re-enter the fight with a possible epicenter. It yeah. did not have the follow-up. And this is the worry for VG Game. You know, smiles there on LGD. They know that any time they win a fight with the, the greedy item builds that they've gone for, it's certainly going to be all smiles in their booth. Ooh, Somnus. Maybe he has to hide. They're hunting for him. He's TPing. Did they get a glimpse of him there for a second? They oh! Oh! oh my god. That was like point I think that's as close as it gets. That is as close as it gets. A, a paparazzi had backup. That could very well have been a good shot of finding Solnus and killing him on his own. But he's out. Successful TP. And, and now just trickling down to only a 1k lead for VG Gaming. You've got to start to wonder if that timing is starting to fall away from them again here in game two. It's going to get much harder for them to start taking these fights into the BKBs. Ame almost has his finish, a level 18 Dragon Knight now. So we saw those levels are really going to build up on the DK till, we, till he starts getting that level 20 talent in particular and just continue to get that gold increase. And he's tanky. Level 18 with that extra Dragon Slow as well versus the Sven in particular. Once you get your BKB on your Sven, you're running around, you get hit by this Elder Dragon level three and you're just slowed. You're just going to constantly get that slow to apply to you. They're going to have to get some chain stuns into bursting it some of these targets, because this thing is that LGD, they don't really have that much save on their side. They have the Glimmer Cape and they're building the four step on FY, but if they can get the chain stun and they can blow up the DK before he gets the BKB, that's probably the best way they can have a fight start. Yeah, Chalice, these minuses are just putting them, they're so high level, right? It's a 1k gold advantage for Vici, but if we look at the experience, it's a 4k for LGD because of those, even though they were losing some of those fights just because of the minus usages. That's only gonna grow as time goes on. There's no doubt about it for Vici Gaming to keep ahead, keep on par at least. They have to try and find these catch-offs, these pick-offs. They'll go for the smoke. It's, it's always hard to do. Anytime yeah. there's a Spectre on the opposite side, going for these smoke plays, you know that there's going to be instant reaction. You've got to make a pick. You've got to make it quick. Ideally, you've got to find Spectre as that target at the start of the fight. You just got to kill one of them, right? Kill one of those cores before they're able to get their defensive items up or get saved. Just blow them up instantly so you can get another advantage with Vici. Right now, they're setting themselves up around the Roche too, so if they can get a kill set up, they can easily bring that 
fight into the Roche Pit for themselves if they have, you know, they have a God Strength from Sven, so they can't bring it down quickly. But it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to find anything, and this time, it's time wasted, where LGD is able to farm and get that information on the map. LGD's turn to smoke and look for the fight themselves. Ori is already starting to hunt kind of a bit down bottom. They know that Ame was here. But Ame, again, we see him doing this a lot. He backs up, goes to TP's to the base. He doesn't TP to any other tower. He TP's all the way back to the base to be as defensive as possible so that he does not get ganked. Because he can just haunt into the fights. He wants them to fight the rest of his team. See what sort of a catch they can get. They are going to walk into the entire lineup of Vici Gaming. Vici Gaming can find the setup for the trees. Oh. So it will be dispelled. Jang goes in for the first bar. It's only after the one of them, but Paparaz is fully coming on the DK. The Hawk comes out. They've got Vigil on the Sonos, but Sonos can turn with his own BKB pop. They're fine. Lines up the ice part. Four is trying to move and look for that Reaper side target. Sonos keeps himself away as the BKB starts to end. There'll be a double buyback from Vici Gaming. Both DY and Yang getting themselves back in the game. They're trying to find some sort of a catch, but also, as the buybacks come out, PSG LGD, they just back off. They retreat and they lose lose nothing. The instant disengage. It seemed like they knew those buybacks were going to come before they even happened. They were really just dancing around the fight, ready to back away instantly. They get the kill. Ame focusing heavily on the supports as we see playing support versus Spectre is just not fun. He's able to instantly get those pickoffs onto the line at almost every start of the fights. They were very close though there to be able to bring down, almost being able to bring down Somnus. If they had already in a better position there, he could have potentially gotten that Reaper side and they could have started the fight at a big advantage. They're just throwing everything down onto the Dragon Knight at the start of it all. But that just little bit of a window there for him to put that BKB. And uh, the smart, clean call to be made to just get out of there. And Yang is the one who's, you know, the smoke got broken, so he immediately has to stun in, but then he just gets chain controlled. He gets Ice Path, Ogre stunned, DK stunned, and all the damage just starts burning and tickling away. And it's, I mean, Yang seems to be the really big important one for the team. He's really contributing so much damage when he does get those epicenters nice. off. It's almost as if Yang, rather than being the one to start the fight, he has to be the one to, to sort of sit back and make sure that he can get that epicenter off. They need that damage output. They've got to somehow follow up the, the initiation from the Lion. They're gonna have another they're gonna have to have another way to save him in particular. Like they have the four staff for fade, so they're probably gonna have to prioritize four staffing Yang. If Yang does do like a blink stun to initiate for them to get like a follow-up arrow or something like that, they're gonna have to force him away so he can back up reset so he can get an opportunity to get that epicenter. Because they are seeming to need that damage when those BKBs go down. They're just too tanky, and the fights just get way too chaotic when there's a Spectre in the game. So it definitely has to, to be respect to the fact that Vici Gaming are keeping level in farm, despite themselves being up against three Midas's. Just goes to show how much they're, they're still able to get done. The question is if it is enough. As now with the, the slight gold lead going the way of LGD, you know that another bad fight for Vici Gaming it's going to be when they begin to fall behind in terms of item progression. LGD, have we got anything co getting close to or Mantis style? Levels. There. They're about to have level 20 as well. Yep, they have talent. 21 on the DK, so that 210 GPM, we're going to see that gold really start skyrocketing forward. And yeah, the big one, like we said, the experience. That's what those minus is private. It's a 10,000 experience lead for LGD, even if Vici is keeping the gold extremely close to pretty much the entire oh, wait, game. Really? It's so close right now in the money. Just like last game too, right? Even though Vici wasn't able to take fights at all last game, they were at a completely even net worth the whole time in the game. So they're very efficient around the map, but we see this win probability. It's a Spectre proceeding into the 32 minute, proceeding into the later stage of the game, getting all these items built up. Not even just a Spectre, a Spectre with Bloodlust and a DK also with Bloodlust. So they have high scale and potential. Time to go with the smoke. They want the fight. Spectre pushing up on him. He has the Horn Army ready to join them. They scan. They're a little afraid to just walk up onto a high ground just here. Paparazzi. Paparazzi stepping forward, get him with a blink stun, he needs help and he needs it now. Force back, will allow Paparazzi to be separated from PSG LGD and Somnus did commit both the Dragon form and the BKB there. Chalice gets a nice multicast on the Midas. Throws the Vessel onto Yang, making sure he can keep stopping the blink, the arrow. Right. Whoop. Juked out by Chalice, they want to try and poke back if Ichi Gaming up. It's Somnus is going to be very weak for the fight without the ult or the BKB. Looks like they can't quite get a grab. Again, PSG LGD, they're very good at this maneuver, getting in, and as soon as they realize it's not the situation, the terms that they want to fight under, they always get themselves out, and pa uh, Paparazzi and the boys, they just can't grab any. Chalice, the super beefy frontliner now. 3,350 HP because of that 40 strength. 
36 armor. Yeah, we, we love Ogre. Just look at his damage, too. Man. Plus 100 damage down. I love it. I love watching this hero. It's Vici. Looking to get aggressive here. Fine. They know that this DK does not have Elder Dragon form, so they're trying to catch something. The arrow will connect. They do have gold strength. They're gonna have to pop. They're gonna it. commit they're heavily for tanky. this one. He is. He's a big boy, Chalice. He is so tanky. <laughs> That's three heroes trying to have a go on him. They barely bring him down below half health. And yeah, that's what we were saying, man. Ogre, when you get that 40 strength talent, when you've got a solo crest and a pipe, it's not easy to bring him down. See, they they, they want to try and get something done with this god strength usage. They're into the pit. It's going to be wearing out, though, and it's spotted. Doing Rose versus Elder Titan is not the easiest thing at all. Moonlight Shadow, it's VG Gaming. They want to try and poke for a fight. The ult's going to be up pretty soon for Somnus, though. 15 seconds. Another multicast by He's the making crowd. the money. That was, a, I think that's the third one in a row that he's gotten either a 4x or a 3x. Cash money. I can see it there. 5,000 gold pretty much earned by this Midas. <laughs> Investment made it back in 2.4 2 times. Usually you will not see that until way later stage of the game, but it's an over. And they're smoked up. Like you said, they've got the Elder Dragon form. They're just looking to take fights now. There's no God Strength for 50 seconds for Vici. This is a very weak time for them if they do get caught. Yang actually picks up the rune. They know Ames knows this. He goes for the two bounty runes right underneath the noses of LGD. Yeah. All around. He's going to be able to get in and get away with it without any sort of fight kicking off. FY is starting to hunt. Oh, leave just outside Top. the vision. No, he saw him. Horn's going to be used. They're going to try and chase for this one. A bar strike over to the side. Macro fires down. He's trying for the TP. Anything to cancel it in time. Yes, there is. Chalice. With the stun, holds back Yang. As he'll get the bounty runes, cost him his life. He's dead for 90 seconds. As LGD, they can look to make a player at the least. Just be happy. There's just 90 seconds more. But they can continue to, to work with the efficiency of their Midas's. They're going to they, they're gonna set up for the Roche. They have the Manta, the Diffusal. They have that high desolate damage that comes out from Spectre if he does want to come into the pit. There's 70 seconds. They're going to go in here for sure. With that solo crest, too. Oh, even pop for DK form. He just scored. Horn. They get the stun control. He's been forced down in the river. We'll have the chance to pop the BKB. Fade. Turn. Hit upon him. The blast set up onto Fade. Holds him in place of H Nova's ultimate. And all his BKB It's going to wear off to pop the hood. The ice path control again. If I catch the paparazzi, though. In on the Please. backside, the three man stun. Has he got the damage? They're trying for Sonus. The figure comes out for DY. Reapers is there. Or he gets the kill. But he will fall. Paparazzi still trying his best to fight behind. Triple buybacks coming out from Vici Gaming. They want to strike back. They want to strike back hard. Paparazzi leads forward on towards the dragon. The goes round for more. It's slowing down Arbe. Stop from X Nova. It's going to allow them some chance to disengage. But the chase will continue. FY shuts down the escape. Oh God. Ice pass there to block them off. They're still chasing that Paparazzi. He's in. Stop from Chalice. Holds him back. Arrow. Fade. Does he find the connection? No. Will be Duke Top. Another all rallied around the shrine here too. Ori still looking for more chalice. He's gonna get Bloodthorn. See if they can be at the pick off here onto the ogre. He's so beefy, so much strength. They've already been able to turn and beat down DY. Another stun from Paparazzi comes out. Multicast uh -oh. onto Ori. Ghost Trail. Guardian Green is healing him back up. War cry from Paparazzi used to try and keep Ori safe. The BKB's back online. And they get chalice. Yang, do you hear him coming in? But yeah, another man. ice path here. FY. Just shutting down any chance for Yang oh to get in. Paparazzi's popped the BKB, but that's two dead on Vici Gaming without buyback available. LGD, they've got the numbers. FY again, locks down Ori with the setup of the Ice Pump. Ori will fall, so will Fade. As these buyback plays not working out for Vici Gaming, they chase back too far. And that was one of the most costly attempts of a team fight we've seen, down 3k gold after that beachy. And that was one of the most impressive disengages I've seen so far at this tournament. The way LGD just instantly backs up. The buybacks come out, they back up, but they're still kind of ready to fight. They rally themselves around the shrine, and they just keep their tanky frontliners in and position there to take all the damage. And now Rose is going to go their way. 5k lead for LGD. These long duration team fights, the support surviving for so long. I don't even know how many stomps, how many heroes X Nova stomped inside. I mean, both the support, the support combo, combo here is crazy right it, now for LGD. So much AoE control in these team fights from X Nova and FY. It makes it impossible for BG Gaming to chase down targets when the BKBs have worn off. They always just seem to be living all throughout the fights because of these, this 
ridiculously tanky frontline. The Ogre, the DK, the Spectre, they provide way too much distraction. It just allows them to sit in the back and just keep chain locking people down. They're gonna take the mid racks. There's still 40 seconds without the Necrofoss, 20 without Fade. Mid racks will fall. They'll push on for more with a good duration left on the Elder Dragonform. There's no reason for LGD to back off yet. As they will take this second set. From Vici jumping in as well, looking for a bit of a poke onto DY. There's the stomp. X Nova controlling the lion. In they go with the stuns. Get DY in. cannot escape. Paparazzi Yang to get in. It's a big epicenter. They've killed off one. BKB popped by Paparazzi, but he has to get back. He's got to wait for the rest of the team to get in, or he's back in 10 seconds. Yang, can he find the setup? Power strike, looking Ooh. for the arrow, but the illusion blocking the arrow connection. Means that Arme can very easily sneak himself away, or at least try to. He's got the BKB, should be fine. BKB in a TP out gets him back to base. As again, LTD with another very successful disengage, only losing X Nova off the back of that. Every single time, right? They're just so damn good at getting away from the fights. These four staff plays, just little defensive moves, the way that they're positioning, it's. It's pretty remarkable for just Vici has seemed to have just hit a brick wall so far in this game. Every move is, it's just flawless Yeah, from LGD right now. They're not able to get the combo. Vici, like we said, the best way that they can get these fights started is they need Ori to be in position to blow a target up with that Reaper set before they get the BKBs up. But he doesn't have a mobility item. He doesn't have a way to get in with Paparazzi, which is costing them, and there's just so much control. When you're forced to go BKB on a Necrophos, you know it's tough. It's a tough game for you. As a DD rune gets found for Ame, also has the heart finished up if he chooses to buy it. They're all rallying Ooh. together. 13k gold lead, experience approaching 30,000 lead as well. Oh and my Plus goodness. Is really favoring that specter now, of course, after such a strong mid game with those triple Midas's. Yeah, they've got the, the advantage and experience in the real life in terms of making the runs here at TI, and they've got that experience advantage in game. That's for damn sure. LGD showing Vici Gaming who's boss right now here in the upper bracket. And they're all getting their level 25s. We have the 5.25 second Dragon Tail, of course, on top of the extra dispersion from the Spectre. More and more control, more and more damage. And the Aghanim's Dragon. Did he get it? Oh, he actually got it! He got it! Yes! That was one of the things I've been he's, waiting to see this entire time. He's a showman, Somnus. I mean, why not this game? You are playing versus pretty much all magic damage. I saw Paparazzi How do you kill him? him, and Paparazzi was doing like no damage to him almost at all. Now with the Aghanims, how do you bring this down? Oh, I'm so happy. And efficiency as well. Only needs it in his inventory when he wishes to pop the ult. So he'll hold it back. But when he wants to go, Somnus. A minute and 30 until he will put that egg, that axe into his inventory. And we will see the big spooky black dragon. He's going to be able to join. His brother, FY, the double dragon strap, <laughs> ready to push down towers. Dude, his magic resist is gonna be insane. He's gonna be having over 50% magic resist versus this lineup. How do you kill it? Like, with, How do you kill that? With a satanic on top, he even puts the treads away. Oh, like, all right, let's go. He's let's ready. Do black dragon. This isn't even Somnus' final form yet. We're Looking ready to see it. Vici Gaming are looking for the Ramp. Ram. Jack is going to be able to find the jump on X-Nova. How much they want to commit. The Horn comes out, giving them the vision of all the appearances of Vici Gaming. Ori, he's leading it straight away with the BKB with Somnus. The Dragon is out, beating down onto Ori. Ori trying to get back towards the rest of his teammates, but the BKB is going to wear off. Ori's in trouble. Stun's there. Ori's held down. Ori's dead for 90. No buyback. Ice Puff. FY, he's able to get the connection onto DY. Two taken out as LGD chase down for more. Somnus jumps in, locked down onto Paparazzi. They have the chain, so Paparazzi is out of the game. GG is called, and LGD are one step closer to moving towards that Aegis. Two to zero, they're not Fiji gaming down to the lower bracket. They just pulled out a triple Midas, triple Midas that. versus a heavy pressure oh, damage, yes. just spell damage lineup from Vici. Vici, they're lacking the tower push, but they were running around looking for kills constantly. But PSG LGD, they make the greed work. They make it work they do. so well in this game. I, did that, I mean, that's scary. Oh, the confidence God. to turn up in the upper bracket, 11 minutes in, farming three Midases and saying, you know, we're going to get away with this. We know that you need to play fast. We're going to give you a chance. But after the game sort of went past that 30 minute mark, questions were asked to Beachy Gaming have it in them. And they did not. LGD just a step ahead. And the maneuvers that they were pulling off there, I mean, there's so much to learn from this game alone. Watching back.
at the way that LGD played this. The I don't think they, they couldn't have played it any better. No, the way that they disengaged inside the fights was remarkable, and the way that they just kept controlling. FY and Xnova did so much work in this game. FY ending 4-2 and 20 in this game. I I just want to see some stun, like how much stun durations we've had between these two in this game, because it seems like they always were seeming to survive. Except for Xnova. He always seems to want to be the one that like, sacrifices himself for the team, but they provided so much lockdown and control. And obviously both teams loved by the, the fans here in the crowd. But definitely LG that came in as the favorites and showing why they will be moving on. And the crowd here is going to be very excited to see them continue their journey towards claiming that Aegis this year. Can they continue to do it? This series looked pretty darn good for them, Rich. It certainly did. I mean, we look at LGD now, and not only did that series look good for them, but they also are just going to have the best seats in the house, right? They definitely are going to be moving forward now in a way that they took down Vici, one of the other teams that looked incredibly dominant. And now we look forward. Do you think that this is the clear favorite to take potentially the entire tournament? Oh, they're in my bracket. That's all I'll say. <laughs> you know, I, I got them going all the way. LGD. And uh, as is typical for TI, the team that, uh, you know, the, the series you expect to be a oh, guaranteed game three. I mean, come on, that's going to happen. Gets the 2-0, whereas these series, maybe in the morning, you're expecting more of these uh, kind of walkovers. So you, beautiful game three. So you're not that confident in LGD that you think they were 2 0 this? You think they're going to win the whole thing, but you didn't yeah. think they were that much better than Vici? Well, I think if you were looking at the series today, out of the first, second, and third, this is the one you would have picked for a third game, don't you think? Mm, I, I of think course, it's I really knew LGD would win. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. I think, though, it's it's one of those really important things to actually mention when you are talking about it. What you are touching upon, I feel like, is the story of this TI. I've said it on other panels. I, I look at the field of play. We have a bunch of longtime veterans that some of them even have the potential to win their second TI. And then we have these underdog teams. And when we've looked at the underdog teams in the lower portion of the bracket, they have overperformed in pretty much all of their matchups. And I do want to take a moment here now to kind of say, when we look down in the lower portion of the bracket, who do we think the biggest threat is? Because we saw a lot of those underdog teams play really well, but we've also seen the teams that have kind of risen above. Who do you think the biggest threat is in the lower portion of the bracket? In Famous. You think so? Yes. You think they're the real deal? I think it's always scary to play against a team that absolutely have nothing to lose. Like, yeah. seriously. Th there's nobody who has less to lose than Infamous. They're already overperformed. I don't think they expect a top eight. They're already there. So they're scary. They can play their hearts out and be like, you know, we're just doing our stuff, see how yeah. far it goes. Apart from that, I would say the loser of the next matchup is probably the biggest threat to OGD. Um, True. Yeah, yeah that, we don't that know who that is. That, that is really true. So we have a lot of exciting stuff that's still coming up for today's games. And not only today's games, we have a lot of big reveals. Uh, <gasps> I'm pretty sure we're going to have uh, an ogre celebration ceremony. Oh, too. come on, Rich. That's what you're hoping I'm for. I'm sorry. It, it's been written since the very beginning of this tournament. No. Just because Ogre is this big meta guy, he's all huge. He's got two heads. Wow. Very exciting. Do you know how popular Wind Ranger is? I mean, she's a hero that people no. come to Dota. She's the face of Underlords. She is a hero that people see and they want to play. You guys are underestimating the, the percentage of the Ogre's population that we don't Underlords. hear from. Ogre is fantastic. That is true. You're not he's playing very blood broken. contracts. Really good. You, you are well. doing it all wrong. Thankfully, we have somebody who's doing it right. We're going to jump down to the floor. And we're going to hear what Casey has to say. Oh, Trent. <laughs> we're going to talk to Ame right now about uh, both of those games. Um, I want to know what it's like to play a team that you are so used to playing. You know each other so well. You know your style of play. And there's also such a huge level of respect there. Uh, 就比基嘛,我們之前訓練也打了很多吧,就都比較了解嘛,然後就真打起來的話,看發揮嘛,應該就我們運氣比較好吧,可能他們讓我們的吧. We played many practice matches with them before coming to TI and we know them very well. I feel like we're a bit lucky and I feel like they're letting us off a little bit. Oh, really? Okay, interesting, interesting. <laughs> There's a chance that you're going to be playing uh, OG next. Um, are you looking forward to the potential of a TI-8 Grand Final rematch?
嗯，我非常期待跟他们比赛。I look very forward to seeing them in the match. Okay, can't wait. Congratulations again, Ame. Appreciate it. Thanks.